Do you have any test operations restricted area 2508? Area 31, Roger. The traffic is quite luminous and is exhibiting some non-ballistic motion, over. Roger, Aries 31. Continue to send it to your discretion, over. Okay, Senator. The traffic is approaching head-on, ultra bright, and really moving. They're right by us right now. There are a thousand UFO sightings reported around the world every month. 90% of these sightings can be explained, but 10% cannot. Officially and unofficially, the U.S. military has been investigating UFOs since 1947. Their top secret goal is to find out what's behind these unexplained sightings. The Pentagon classifies them as unusual airborne anomalies, but a better term is X-Files. Join us now as Mac, Wan Wan, and Commander Cobra explore these unsolved cases, UFO incidents that baffle even the U.S. military. This is Mac Maloney's Military X-Files. And now, here's Mac Maloney. Oh, good evening, everyone, and welcome to Mac Maloney's Military X-Files show here on the Distant Thunder Radio Network. This is Mac Maloney. Wow. What a show we have for you tonight. First, let me introduce the members of the gang, a.k.a. the posse. Girls, get ready. It's time to sit down, get your fan, get your mister, get your big box of Kleenex, extra big box of wipes. And your squeegee, because he's here, the very famous Juan Juan. <laughs> How big is that squeegee, Mac? I don't know. Hey, it's good you to see you. Us. <laughs> it's good to Use see you, Use the sexy Mac. voice, though, if you, when you tell us. That? All right. Good <laughs> to see you, I everybody. I thought that was Welcome. the sexy voice, no? Welcome, oh, that was the That was the uh, challenging voice right there. That's how he talks to people. <laughs> good to see everybody on Zoom. Good to hear everybody. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, especially the girls. Yeah, baby. Welcome to another great show. It's going to be great, right, Mac? You I can, hope so. You can hey, Mac, gu- guarantee do you know it. That, do you know that uh, one one is one of the few people? He's a repeat offender on this. That he'll go to a toll booth if there's a woman in it, even though he has easy pass. <laughs> <laughs> Let me introduce the rest of the gang, okay? Before we get to the humor, the alleged humor, uh, up there in his compound, formerly a bunker. They know him as Coco on the streets, but we know him as Commander Cobra. Good evening, sir, and all, and very much pleased to be on the wall. Okay. All the snow gone yet? <laughs> all the snow's gone. And today was a big day uh, on the uh, farm. Mm-hmm. Piper, the uh, mini horse, had to get put in the back of the forerunner and oh. taken to the vet for floating of the teeth. For what? A cleaning of the teeth. Floating of the teeth. I don't know. I still didn't get horse talk? Floating. Yeah, it's kind of horse talk. What happens? They put a large metal contraption into the mouth of the horse to stabilize it. Uh, yeah. Give them a little meds. Yep. And what they do is uh, they kind of grind and clean the teeth down to get them all level and cleaned up. And poor, oh, Piper, uh-huh. uh, hmm. poor Piper, before she came to us, was not well cared for. Hmm. One of the reasons we got her. And her teeth are a complete <laughs> mess. Thank God we're not putting braces on it because I would not be able to. Well, it's better than getting your testicles taken off, right? <laughs> Do the yes. T- I don't have any frame of reference for either. I haven't had my teeth ground or my testicles. Okay. I've, had them under, I've had them under control. Okay. And, you know, <laughs> probably put on a shelf, so to speak, but uh, never completely taken away. If you do that, can you do it during the show? What's that? Take, take them away? Either one, either operation. Gotcha. I don't know. I can do it on the show. Okay. okay. You know, they get stale from lack of use. You know, was you, that you testicles really to, on the shelf? Is that like a on, Christmas stop. thing? Good name for a band. <laughs> There's a lady present. Come on. So, so glad we're doing. Uh, I didn't say it. So uh-huh. glad we're doing uh, <laughs> intros and not uh, comedy before right. the intro. Yeah, we know. I need Thank to. God. I do comedy now. <clears throat> Up there in Battle Creek, Michigan, the home of the flakes, is our national correspondent, Switchblade Steve Ward. Uh, it is great to be here, and I'm going to try and and not to do any more humor before the introductions are completely finished. Okay, yeah, good. Control yourself. Good to see you, Mac. Um, <clears throat> um, switch, hey, Mac, you got to ask me what I had for breakfast because it may be relevant. Okay, we will do that. But I have to, I don't want to, I don't want to pull a pin out of this hand grenade again, but Switchy, I swear your pot is on the other side tonight. <laughs> Are you potting your you know, hair thought- on the other side? And for a moment, I was disappointed that Club wasn't going to be here. Club is uh, on a secret mission. 
you know, the front part of his hair looks like Albania. Something. The outline of Albania. If you look Something's at Something's going on. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. From, like, from about 60,000 feet, looks like Albania. Oh, okay. I get it. All right. Only you, Cole, would have that perspective. Let's get to the good part of the introductions. <laughs> it's our favorite good witch. Up in upstate New York, our good, good friend, Raven. Raven, how are you tonight? Raven. Hi, my friends. I'm doing Raven, so good. How are you? Thank you for having me. Hmm. Now, I have to, once again, I wish we were a TV show because tonight Raven is rocking the two bun look. Yeah. The two bun look. I call it the Princess Leia look. Princess Leia. I got a Princess Leia thing going. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Princess Leia <laughs> always looked to me like she had like cinnamon rolls on the yeah, side. And they were right yeah. over her ears. Right. Yeah. yeah. yeah this, is, this is more <laughs> like a. Like like the wisdom horns of a great sculpture from Italy and during the Renaissance. Wow! Oh, yeah. Listen or to this like guy. how um, <laughs> what's her name from that one movie had her hair. Guys, yeah, I know it's exactly what I was thinking. What's her name? Yeah, from that movie exactly. Yeah. It, it looks hair. exactly the same. Are you, are you like reading my mind? Is that on yeah. XM? On XM? Yeah, it's show? on. It's on Netflix. You can oh. watch it. Okay. So good. Okay, and who is? Because just give us a hint. Who's the actress? Is it? Um, no, I'm being serious. Actually, I just can't think of the name of the movie. Oh, okay, um, right. it's that good, Matt. Tim Burton's wife. Uh, mm-hmm. Tim Burton's mm-hmm. wife. She was in Fight Club. Leia for a minute. Love story, comedy, rom com. No, what is it? it was a musical. Sweeney Todd. Sweeney Todd. Sweeney Todd. What? We were just talking. Oh, about Sweeney him a Todd. Yeah, I, I didn't you like used it. To the Baba. You Johnny didn't Depp's go in it, right? Okay, Johnny Depp. So. We've introduced everyone. Juan, Juan, will you want to say something, Juani? Uh, what I had for breakfast, if you want to ask me. All right, well, let's, we're going to go to Switch first. Okay. Is it anticlimactic? Can we go to you first? Can uh, we go to Switch yeah. first, right? Mine, I've got a big finish. You better better do one one. Yeah, my, mine could be considered a little boring. Here we go. Okay, here's here we what go. I had this for little breakfast. foreplay. I, Juan, Juan, be, what did you have? Because I stayed home today, morning? you know, and I didn't feel like going out anywhere. I'm looking go at ahead. the cupboard, and I got, man, I got to go shopping. I got nothing to eat here. So, so... I had a bowl of um, uh, Bob's Red Mill oatmeal, the kind of oatmeal you have to cook for 15 minutes. <laughs> Raven's Cherry. Is that your favorite oatmeal? I love oatmeal. How, how, do you so dress up, how do you dress up your oatmeal? So boring. You know, Hot like uh, honey. Yeah. I, I love honey in it and uh, cinnamon. Yes. Gra- ground cinnamon straight from Vietnam. Uh, Vietnam. And then... That wasn't enough. About an hour later, I was still hungry, as you would expect <laughs> from oatmeal. Because there's a lot of carbohydrates and That's oatmeal. right. That's right. Makes you hungry. Huh? I was going to go to Farmer's Kitchen, but I had stuff to do for Eileen. But anyway, I had a okay. bowl of, a, I freshly opened a box of Kellogg's Raisin Bran. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Good. Yes. Good. Yeah. Yes. Go ahead. Heart, and had heart a big friendly, bowl. big bowl. Had a big bowl. Bowl. Big bowl of Kellogg's Raisin Bran. Then I tend to sweeten it up by throwing a few more um, raisins out of the can there, uh, whatever kind of raisins they are. So you put raisins, extra raisins in your raisin bran? Yeah. On top of oh. oatmeal. Yeah. You're going to wow. be Oh, no, loose. not the oatmeal. Wow. Not Whoa. The, the, the there raisin. we go. <laughs> that, well, that's true. That, it, it, it's Thank true. You. It does uh, help out in that department. <clears throat> wow, we. So that was it. Okay. I put well, I'm glad table. we didn't leave that for last. About a teaspoon of sugar <laughs> on the. No wonder there. you had sexy talk all day today after that breakfast. <laughs> yeah, no. I was. I was. What you have for smooth. lunch? A hot dog. Uh, but Eileen made me an omelet. Oh, it was man. decent. It had spinach in it, mushrooms, uh, onions, and uh, it was about a four egg omelet. Man, she was. She was keeping me home. I was ready to go to Farmer's Kitchen. I said, "Gee, you know, they're waiting for me at Farmer's Kitchen." They're waiting for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is the color of the sky in one Wait. one's world? The world oh, wants man. to know. What you. is the color of the sky here, buddy? How long, uh, how long of a drive is it from your house to? The kitchen? The diner. 15 minutes. 15 minutes. So you're close. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. Book it close. Ever have any of the girls up to your farm? Any of the waitresses? Oh, no. No? You kidding me? That'd okay. be dangerous. That's good. Okay, I'm glad. Because what would happen is they would come in in their you know, bikinis. That's that's how I usually see them when okay. they send me Instagram. In their photos. dreams, maybe. Okay, <laughs> interesting. You know what? Wow. I don't know about you, Raven. But I don't know about women these days. It's amazing oh. what they post on Instagram, and they don't mind that I'm a follower of Instagram. They invite me to say, hey, "You want to follow me on Instagram?" Sure, I'll follow you. It's all about the the likes. 
you know? I guess. What, 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 don't leave us hanging. What do they post to you? Like in negligees and stuff like that? No, well, it's, they're not like uh, erotic photos, but, you know, they're... When they're going out in the town, they always have something, you know, loosey goosey. Or when they're going to the beach, uh, you know, the girls' day at the beach, or you know, Sunday mm-hmm. is fun day, all that stuff. And they're, yes. they're typically, it's been a warm summer, uh, bikini yes. stuff. And then, then you know, it's a, it's a talk. It becomes a talking point because then you say, "Wow, I zoomed in on that." And I'm going, "What the hell tattoo was that?" But you, you zoomed in on. I zoomed on in on I, it. I zoomed in on the picture. You know, I spread it out with my fingers. You know, boop. Uh, okay, 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 okay. Moving okay. right, 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 right along. Moving right along. Well, okay. Know, switch. switch. Maybe you should have gone first. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's got a hard act to follow. That's for sure. <laughs> Maybe you should have gone before him. You're not kidding, okay, switching. <laughs> this was formerly the most uh, listened to part of the show, but let's see what happens. Okay, switch. What did you have for breakfast this morning? Well, you, you know how uh, it only at some time, I mean, these days, it only becomes kind of interesting if I had like a dud the week before. I mean, if I had a, an energy bar or a piece okay. of toast or or, or something like that, and then I have one of, you know, maybe the steak and eggs, then that sounds really good. You've got you to disappoint people for a couple of weeks before they get excited again. Really? Well, today I went to Bob Evans. Now, Bob Evans, I realize, is a chain that isn't everywhere in the U.S., Yes, they've got great breakfast. I have I have talked about their uh, biscuits and honey, butter Ooh, and honey before. That sounds good. Yes, and how yes. It snuffles the dog. You know how he gets that biscuit and snuffles. he hugs himself and he floats to the, the ceiling. Yeah, that's kind of what happens when I have one of those. But I did not have that today exactly. Okay, no I no had, uh, levitation. Got it. Check levitation. I had not on the checklist. Got it. Bob Evans, biscuits and gravy. Oh, and and. Two eggs over easy oh. with white toast mm. and uh, yes. hot black coffee and orange juice. Yes, yes. Okay, let's review here that's, for a second. That's, that sounds so you balanced. got biscuits. Yeah. Now let me let me just say I put a little bit of butter on the biscuits. These yep. are really good biscuits. Yeah, they, you, you, you got to be mindful of your diet. Are they grilled right. or toasted good biscuits? For you. Are so they grilled just biscuits? Put a little bit, put a pat of butter on there. Right. Good for you. Then, then not, not just a little bit. It sounds good. And Go then, ahead. then I had the bowl of gravy. And then you spoon the gravy. It yeah, oh, yeah. 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 And, and sometimes you have to spoon more during the meal because you're, you kind of run out. Wow. So yes. Then I can switch over to the eggs and toast. Eggs over easy. Wow. So that you can dip your toast into the, you know, the eggs. So yeah. you had the biscuits yeah. and the toast. And eggs. Yes. Yeah. Mm, wow. Interesting. Okay. Wow. That's Did you eat the whole I, thing? I, I thought about, you know what? I, I almost did eat the whole thing. Just, just mm-hmm. the, so, so damn yes. good. I was, and, I was and, thinking and about the legal proceedings. The answer would be yes. Treating the witness hostage. Oh, no, I, I left a little bit of toast behind, so I oh. ate the whole thing. Okay, that's good. All right. Being, being accurate here. Yeah. They probably gave it to some homeless guy out back. So listen, how much well, did he, that cost? He enjoyed it. What? How much did that cost? Uh, about 15 I think. Okay, that's All reasonable. Right. And uh, who waited on you? Are you? Do you have a personal relationship? Uh, I, I don't know. A, a delightful young lady. Uh, she's yes. very good. Okay. I don't, know, don't know her name. So what'd you do? What did, you, what did I do? What'd you I, tip I, her? I, I thanked her. And uh, I, I uh, ten bucks. Ten bucks. All right, switchy. St- setting the, the curve, That's setting decent. the standard for Macmillan's military X Files tip. Yeah. Great tip. Mm-hmm. Midwest Division. Midwest Division. Yeah. I, n- okay, I never switch. heard of the chain. What is you it called? Learn, Bob Evans. You learn well there, Grasshopper. Hey. What was the name no, of the chain? You had to learn me nothing, Mr. Yes. Maloney. Okay. Let's go back and th- listen listen to the shows about two months ago. And hey, hey, wait, hey, it, let me hey, Raven, have you ever been a waitress? You have, right? Didn't you work in a have you worked in as restaurants? A, yeah, I was a waitress for like two minutes. And two minutes yeah. <laughs> because really... I spilled uh water all over this poor woman and I was so embarrassed I couldn't go back. <laughs> really? Okay. That's all it took. Yeah. Really? Okay. Yeah. No. But right. I was a I was a, that was before a restaurant she... a few years ago. You you were what? Excuse me? I was working at a restaurant a few years ago. But didn't you work in a donut place or a Starbucks or something? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, was I was it a stop? barista. Oh, really? really? Yeah. What was that like? You must run into just intolerable yes. people all day long. Oh, I yeah. Couldn't, it was just, I couldn't take it. Was it was great. <laughs> <laughs> How were they tipping? Were they allowed to tip? Mm-hmm. Um, really- tips were good. Um, mm-hmm. And then we had regulars and like around the holidays, sometimes they would give us, you know, like 25 bucks. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't bad for wow. slinging coffee. What was, uh, what was, um, 
what are they like working as an employee? What's it like to be a Starbucks employee? Oh, I hey. work for Starbucks. I work oh, for oh I thought it was Starbucks. Oh, okay. All right. Where yeah, were you? Dunkin', the, Dunkin' yeah, Donuts? Yeah, the white trash version. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I love Duncan. Um, oh, they're not a sponsor, I are they? I loved yeah. working there. I, I was actually one of the managers, so I could pretty much wow, do wow. my own thing. You were manager of a Duncan Donuts? What to do. Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow, we okay. All right, interesting. Well, I heard that could yeah, be America America. runs on Dunkin' Donuts. That's right. I, I can't imagine working in a Starbucks. I've been in a Starbucks once in my life. I've told the story before. I, I was down in New York City and I was gonna have lunch with an editor and he said, or like a late breakfast, he said, I'll meet you at Starbucks at the corner of forty seventh and fifth or something. Yeah, there's only I'm, like three of them there. I'm sitting in the Starbucks, I'm going, Where is this guy? And I look parallel across the street, there's another Starbucks. Right. <laughs> 50 feet that's away. Crazy. And I go in there There's, and I, that's I walk in and he goes, where you been? <laughs> <laughs> well, Dunkin' Donuts. Okay. Well, we could go on for a long time about Dunkin' Donuts. The donuts used to be much better than they used to be, but that's another show. Yeah, definitely another so show. Did, they, so did you dress up in the, did you have a Dunkin' Donuts uniform and so on? Yeah. I mean, the jeans and a, I mean, I was a manager. I did what I wanted. So yeah, I wore wow. jeans and like a t-shirt. Did you ever get to fire and... anyone? Did you ever get to fire anyone? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Really? What One for? time I fired somebody um, in the drive-thru because they called in and then came to the drive-thru when they were supposed to be at work. Oh, that's and they a left bad us move. Super shorthanded. And I said, don't come back. And I slammed the door in his face. <laughs> okay. So, so he calls in what's sick or I can't make it today. And then, mm-hmm. he, then he goes to the drive-thru to get some food. Yep. How stupid wow. is that? Okay. With his friends, like a car full of friends. And I'm like, yeah, like you're done here. <laughs> and was he the driver? Yeah, he was driving. Wow. <laughs> just hanging out with his friends. Good well, plan. I was just like, good yeah, plan. good plan. Oh. Good plan. Yeah. Okay. You, did, just, you didn't want him as an employee anyway. He sounds like a dumbass to do that. Yeah, it sounds like, yeah. Uh, you had to get yeah, rid of was. him. Meanwhile, Switch has about 4,000 donuts in his uh, traffic behind him. So <laughs> yeah. anyway, Switchy, okay, yeah, Bob Emmons. Okay, now, are they going to miss you at Denny's? You think, uh, you know, staying well, away is going to uh, make you know, hot? I, 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 you know, I, I haven't uh, for, uh, forsaken Denny's, you know. Mm-hmm. Okay. What you have for lunch? I'm just curious. Um. Well, that was, that was a, a really late breakfast, so I guess I had a, uh, you had a sandwich. He can always remember the breakfast. He can never remember the lunch, though. It's like he blacks out on the breakfast. Yes, it's it's the caloric uh, recovery uh, that's uh, required after breakfast. I had some good good bread from the from the bakery and the grocery store. Uh, I had some uh, salami and some Munster cheese and a little bit of mayo. Mayo, but I didn't pile it on because I I still, you know, it was feeling the effects of that breakfast. So I I I just had a kind of. But Good usually plan. I can pile on a sandwich, you know, I can put it. Uh, safety tip switch. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If, if you have some collateral damage show, from that breakfast. A signal, okay. And we'll mute your mic. Okay? Was, oh, I think we should record it. <laughs> was this a cellophane wrap <laughs> sandwich? It could be like a really good bumper. So anyway, tonight, uh, uh, tonight, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about several like really strange places around the world, secret bases and so on that you've probably never heard of. Because the secret, and also Switchy has a very strange story uh, about aliens and uh, cops and, you know, things that people plant in the ground and so on. So there is a, uh, in amongst the donuts, Switch is holding up a copy of Beyond Area 51 by, who is that? By Mac Maloney. Wow, on sale everywhere. Wow. Thank you, Almost Switch. looks like money, doesn't it? Yes. yes. Mac yes. money. Mac money. <laughs> oh, it's funny. That's kind of a <laughs> because with that book. Uh, no money. That's a twin but <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, not always like that, but that one just, you know, was a swing and a miss, as it turns out. Anyway, really? But never say shame, never. Because that's a really good one. That was Never it, say never. Well, it's, funny, it's, uh, it's I'll tell time. you, let me tell you a very quick story, seeing as we have to tap dance here for a while. That was the follow up to UFOs in wartime, okay, which right. was a very successful book. And usually the follow up doesn't, you know, the, the publisher doesn't put as much push behind it because they just figure everyone who bought the first one will buy the second one. So it becomes an orphan in a way. Now, Mac, sorry if I interrupt you, but is that what you guys call like the horizontal sale, not the big vertical jump? You get this like long term horizontal sale. That's mm-hmm. the point. Yeah, kind of. Yes, right. Yeah, right. For me, what I've described as in the business is a mid list writer. Mid-list writer, 
Okay, paperback books has somewhat of a following, enough for them to print a book, publish a book, and enough of the you know fans will buy it, and mm-hmm. everyone makes money. Mm-hmm. Not a whole lot of money, but you know everyone is happy. Let's say sure. Um, but sometimes the publishing world is very strange, and you know things. I don't know. They fall through the cracks, or they you know they just kind of throw the spaghetti on the wall and see what sticks, that type of thing. So this Beyond Area 51, which I think is a cool book. X is, is. in it, you know, yeah. and it talks about all these secret bases around the world. And then when I was on uh, Coast to Coast there about a month ago. Um, Great interview, by the way. My my thank you, my agent, uh, actually, uh, Jim Frankel, um, took down the numbers on Amazon before the show. And then he took them down afterwards where the ranking of this particular book was. And it went up a thousand points. I think I've mentioned this before, which just okay. shows you the power of that show, you know. Um, so, uh, you know, maybe there's some life in it beyond area 51, uh, but we got a long way to go. Um, so anyway, but we will be talking about some of the stories in it tonight. So, um, I'm just going to throw this real quickly to Raven. Raven, something strange happened to you today, yesterday. You had to have an emergency saging. Yeah, it was Friday. Friday. Friday Okay. Go ahead. What happened? Um, so yeah, um, Mr. Raven and I were in our living room watching TV and all of a sudden, we just heard like this like, flop just upstairs. Oh. And we kind of figured it was Friday because Scotch was sitting right next to us. So we're just like, all right, like whatever. Friday, your cat. Friday, the cat. Friday, and, my and cat. Scotch, cat. Yep. And Scotch, my dog. <laughs> and um, so we were like, all right, that was like super weird, whatever. <clears throat> and then Friday comes walking out of our dining room, which was like, you know, six feet away away from where we were sitting and i'm like okay "Okay, cool that wasn't friday okay so oh my god my heart is racing because this is like so freaky um so we i'm like i'm just gonna go upstairs and like check it out yes so i did and um, what what was mr raven's uh, what was he doing whoa 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 whoa, whoa. what was he going for cigarettes the anchoring the uh, (laughs) is he protecting the animals downstairs while you go upstairs what was the story there I'll watch he came door. up with me, but I went up first Okay, because All I right. was like, I, I just need to figure this out. Um, so I came upstairs and I looked in, you know, my house is small. So it's like you come up, up the second floor and there's, you know, bathroom, room, bedroom, bedroom, and just a very tiny hallway. And in the middle of the hallway is one of my shoes that was sitting in the room that I'm sitting in right now. Okay. And the way that we have our doors because of the cat, we have a what's called a buddy strap on the door. Well, sounds so dirty. it only <laughs> it, it only allows the door to ever be open, like you know, a couple inches so uh, that the cat can get in, yeah. but the dog yep. can't. So okay. that was on the door. And my shoe was in this room with that latch on. So the door was open, you know, four or five inches, and then there's my shoe sitting in the hallway. And mm. it just made absolutely no sense because even if it just doesn't make sense because Friday was downstairs. Right. She wouldn't have even been able to move that shoe anyways, because right. I don't think, I think it's too heavy. Right. So I'm like, this is bizarre. Yes. So what, happened? what type of shoe? I mean, just, is it, it a Birkenstock? <laughs> um, kind of. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> they're my, they're my like water shoes. So like they're, they're like barefoot shoes. So you can wear them. When you're in the woods. <laughs> right. Okay. Amongst All right. The trees. It must be a girl thing. I don't, I don't know. It. Water shoes. Is that what you're saying? Are they, Water are shoes. Are those big yeah. plastic clogs like kind beach. of thing? Oh, oh okay. I see. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We're, okay. Yeah. All right. And then I, 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 soles. And in the woods. I they have like rubber soles on. They're like sneakers, but like they're really soft and you can, I, I wear them hiking. I wear them like you could wear them in, in the water or anything. Mm. So what yeah. happened? So, I'm like, well, that was super weird. So I was like, um, both of us were pretty much like, I think we need to sage like right now because Mm. there's just no explaining what that was. Mm. So um, we opened all the windows, saged everything. I have like, you know, my prayer book for it. So I was like reading that prayer book, and um, I went outside and like I was like I was going in the backyard and everywhere. My neighbors probably thought I was nuts. And so then you, you, you have like a handful of sage and that's kind of like a, um, like a weed or something and you burn, yeah, you burn it. the sage, right? And the smoke mm-hmm. yeah. gets rid of the, the, the ghost who has a shoe fetish at the angle. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. So don't, I always have Don't sage mock on the you, saging so. process, yeah, we both, Mac. We both did it. What, what JJ? Don't mock the saging process. <laughs> Not me. So, so okay. what do you think happened? I mean, do you have any theories? I, I mean, I, we know that there's something in this house. We just don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. um, I don't feel like it's anything demonic. So I don't think, you know, exorcism is on the table anytime soon because, okay. you know, you can't be possessed by anything but a demon. Yes. It wasn't like it wasn't awesome because as soon as we like came upstairs when we were saging, um, yes. it felt like everything was just so heavy. You just felt this weight hit your chest. It was, huh. it was really, really strange. And Mr. Raven, you know, like I knew he felt it because I wasn't going to say anything. Cause I'm like, I don't want to like freak him out anymore. Like, you know, this has yes. happened to me before. So, you know, I'm kind of in a, in a different ball game here, but so I didn't want to say anything. And then he was just like, he's like, you feel that. And I was like, yeah, that's mm. not good. Yes, Coco. I just wanted to ask. As a hand did these did these uh, kinds of events happen while you guys were dating? Did Mr. Raven yeah. have an idea what you know what this was with Paradise with he was going to do? Yeah, yeah, he knew what he was getting into. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow, yeah. and he yeah. went anyway. Well, let's good man. Yeah. <laughs> How do we know it's not the ghost of Quentin Tarantino? Because we all know he's into feet and shoes and stuff, right? Good. Right, Wani? Good point. Yeah. Yeah, good thing. And he's still alive, so. I was going to say, that, yeah, that kind of discounts the whole ghost thing, yeah, I there thought, goes when, the you, <laughs> when you said Mr. Tarantino, because I was just yeah. checking to find out if he had passed, and yeah. had not. Can so, we, wow. Hmm. Can we verify uh, Juan Juan's exact location at the time you heard the thumb? Right. Where was or can where we just was simply I? ask, was it was a sexy voice heard at any time during <laughs> this? Was there an open Let's window see, in the ladder? Friday and night. And a challenger out front. <laughs> <laughs> Friday night, I was with my wife, and uh, yeah, that, that, I've heard that you, I, thank God she can't see this as a video as yeah. you're uh, giving this really heartfelt testimony. Mm. Mm. Okay, you know it's good to say at your house periodically, anyway. Okay. Whether you've had tips from one one, yeah, whether you've had any experiences nice deflection or not. one. Well, let's get off know. where you uh, were and let's get right down to I, my favorite sage story. A sage, one one. So, a sage cleansing so, uh, is a good uh, idea. Uh, just to wrap this up, so Raven, where was the other shoe in the room where it should have been? Yeah, yeah, and hmm. the other one was right where I left it, and it was only the one. And it, the like, the thing was like it sounded like it was like tossed into the hallway mm. through an open door, but a, the door a slightly open right. door, oh. yeah. Wow. So, okay. The dog yeah, couldn't have done it. Trying the to cat, figure it out, yeah. but um, wow. I don't. I'm just curious. Did it. you I try to re? Surprised. Did you try to reenact the sound with one of you downstairs and and kind of like just no. lob the shoe to see if it it had the same sound? Did you try that? No, I don't do that because I don't want to. Um, I don't want to give anything. Like but you credit. sage the place. No, but you yes. sage the place. You, you don't oh, want to encourage want to the, the uh, person. Oh, oh, there I was gee. waiting. You know, I can only stay by the net so long and just keep putting that baby up there waiting for somebody to spike the ball. Thank you, Swift. Oh, God, I was trying so hard. It was my wow. pleasure. And he said he wasn't going to go with any humor during the show. Wow. No, no, no. I said before the intros. It was but now teasing. it's all done. Okay. We're ready. Yeah, sure, I, yeah. I got my humor flag up. All right. <laughs> On that high note, uh, why don't we uh, take a quick break now? And we'll be right back after this. You're listening to Mac Maloney's Mill Tracks, our show here on the Distant Thunder Radio Network. We'll be right back. Do you know where the world's most secret bases are located? Do you know what spooky action at a distance means? Is there a conspiracy by aliens to prevent us from conquering space? And where is the best place in the United States to see a real UFO? Find the answers to all these questions and more in Mac Maloney's new book, Mac Maloney's Haunted Universe. Visit places you never knew existed. The Phantom Tunnels of Tokyo, the UFO Trail in South America, Hong's Hat, and the very mysterious M Triangle. Mac Maloney's Haunted Universe contains hundreds of reports on ghosts, haunted planes and ships, weird celebrity deaths, mysterious sounds, and a breakdown of every monster in America, state by state. You've heard him talk about it on the radio. Now, get all of Mac's paranormal research in one large volume. 
Mac Maloney's Haunted Universe with the forward by the very famous Juan Juan. On sale now in your local bookstore or on Amazon.com. UFOs are found in Renaissance art, on ancient coins, and etched on cave walls. They're even reported in the Bible. But more surprising is when UFOs are seen the most in times of war. Through centuries, thousands of UFO sightings have been made by high-ranking officials, military pilots, and ordinary soldiers. Often, these fantastic appearances occur at the height of great battles. From World War I to D-Day to Korea, Vietnam, and beyond, military investigators are baffled. Why do UFO sightings spike so drastically during wartime? Could it be mistaken aircraft? Or is someone or something looking in on us? In UFOs in wartime, what they didn't want you to know, Mac Maloney chronicles centuries of these incredible sightings and tries to solve the puzzle of why so many UFOs are seen while humanity is at war. Read about the scare ships, the ghost planes, and the ghost rockets, alien giants in the jungles of Vietnam, UFOs controlling our ICBM bases, dogfights with flying saucers during the Gulf War, and more. 300 pages of unbelievable stories, along with many startling photographs. That's UFOs in Wartime, What They Didn't Want You to Know, by Mac Maloney. On sale at your local bookstore or on Amazon.com. Welcome back, everyone, to Mac Maloney's Military Exile Show here on the Distant Thunder Radio Network. This is Macaroni. Wow, a little early for the Macaroni, but we have such a great show uh, for you tonight. I'm excited. Let me introduce the members of the gang very quickly. Juan Juan is here, girls. Hello, Mac. Hello, girls. Welcome to the show. Fabulous Thanks. time. We'll be um, by all. Mills Gilson, and Gigi Gills. Um, Coco is here. Commander Cobra. As always, Mac, a pleasure to be on the wing and joining the ball. Um, a national correspondent up there in uh, Battle Creek, Michigan, Switchblade Steve Warden. Great to be here, Mac. He went to Dale Evans today for breakfast. Dale Evans? Dale Bob, Evans. Bob Evans. Dale, Bob Evans. Dale Evans, I believe, was in Western. Dale Evans. <laughs> <laughs> What I mean, uh, did, remember, uh, remember Roy had his he 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 had the hunt's trigger and he had the thing um, stuffed. Remember when he died? Did he? Yeah, Roy yes. Rogers. Yeah, that's in the museum. Yeah, wow. in the museum. Was bullet ever uh, stuffed? Was bullet the dog? Yeah. No, okay. bullet oh. was bullet was his wife. Come on. That was, <laughs> that was Dale Evans. Well, Dale Evans. The circle is complete. Look, could have been a sidekick, I guess. One weird thing about the Roy Rogers show, and I I remember this. Even when I was watching it from my crib, one week it would be in modern times. They'd be driving around in cars and everything, and then the next week it'd be back in cowboy days. There would be a cowboy adventure. They actually switched in time without any explanation. Some were in the old west. Some were in, you know, they'd be driving around in that crazy jeep and everything. The I thought that, that's the crazy jeep. Kind of forward thinking for black very black avant garde, and especially days. for the times. Yeah, right. I had a Roy Rogers. And it must have been guitar. well done since she didn't have any complaints about it. So that's good. Yeah, it was just you know, one of those things, you know. It was kind of cool. I'm more of a Rex Trailer era guy. So it was on that show, made made two appearances on Rex Trailer. You did? Oh, yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Let me cool. introduce Raven real quick. Then we'll get back to that. Raven, how are you doing up there in upstate New York? Our favorite good friends. witch, Raven. Two I'm buns tonight, good. fans. If you're taking score, two buns tonight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. But it's one bun to rule them all, just so one we're clear. Okay. <laughs> like L O T R, right? Am I, I, I keep right? hearing, you know, Mickey Mouse, who's the leader of the club that's made for you? No, I'm getting like a whole uh, Renaissance sculpture vibe, you know, the uh, the the uh, horns of wisdom thing going on there. It's pretty I feel wild. like I look like the caterpillar from a bug's life. No, but no. that's just me. Oh, no, no, wait. No, no. Villain, Hold on. That woman. We'll be the judge of that. Mm. You don't look like the caterpillar. Catwoman, okay. I'll take that. Okay. Wow. Catwoman, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of Catwoman thing going on. 
<laughs> well, listen, <clears throat> what were you saying, Coco, before I interrupted you? I, you're on I, the Red I Trailer Show. I I did not make it to uh, you know anything with Dale Evans uh, and okay. Roy Rogers. That a little bit before my time. Oh, okay. Um, okay. not much. Uh, but Rex Trailer was a bit of a local celeb uh, yep. for uh, some of us in the area here growing up, and I was on his show twice. Okay. Always uh, wanted to be on Major Mud. That was the one I wanted. Major to be Mud on. was the guy, right? We're that talking, was he was he was the man. We're talking real Boston here, and yeah. basically what happened Good when show. we were all growing up, they had these characters local. TV stations would have these characters. One of them yeah, TV was variety uh, shows of the time. Right. Yeah. It was weird. And, and a lot of, they showed the three stooges or they showed cartoons. Or They'd have a little cartoons. bit of everything, you know, sorry, switchy. Uh, we had Captain Jolly and poop deck Paul. Okay. They would there show you go. Popeye cartoons Popeye, like from yeah. the 1940s. Yep. Yeah. It was, uh, you know, um, Rex trailer was a cowboy. Bozo was on channel five. Major mud was on channel seven. Right. So, What's weird about Rex Trailer now that I'm really getting in, in town Boston here, but um, as you know, one one, I went to film school. Yeah, and yes, I do. Who we all the, know, Mac. It's yeah. just got one one. We all know. I think I saw your diploma one day. And he was a um, he was a professor at uh, where I went, Emerson College. In fact, for the four years I was there, four and a half, um, he was voted the most popular professor in the school. All right, we'd see him walking around. He, you know, he he was a, he was a uh, someone who, um, because the school that I went to also uh, taught, you know, how to be on how to how to act on camera and mm-hmm. how to be weatherman and how to be, right. you know, TV performers. That's what he did. He's a very popular guy. I think he just passed away. I think maybe four or five years ago. But a nice that's guy. correct. Very nice um, man. The only thing I, I was disappointed, Mac, the behind the scenes was, as you remember, the opening of Rick Trailer. Yes. Uh, he would ride the horse in. Uh, in the scenes, and then you would see him on horse when he would bring the horse live onto right. the stage where all the kids were. Okay. Yep. Well, I am here to tell you that he really wasn't outside the studio riding through the door coming no. in. No, no. He was. He simply got on the horse just a few steps away behind a curtain. Yep. And did a quick gallop over. To right. Yes. Okay. It was. Uh-huh. It was. That was a bit of an eye opener uh-huh. to understanding how the world worked. Oh, oh right! Oh, now you saw behind the scenes. So was this? What was his? Uh, what was his um, partner's name there? Trigger. No, no. They, they, he had a. He had a. Uh, oh, Festus! Right. I can't remember <laughs> what this guy's name. Yeah. It, it was, that was pa- Gunsmoke. Um, Pablo. 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 Yep. Oh, yeah, yes. Yep. Right. The show would never get on TV <laughs> these days. But no, probably sure not. It wasn't um, one one. No. No. Was, I was thinking. I was thinking. Much. I was thinking of Chester, but that was a magazine. That was. Yes, it does. Major uh, Mundo. Uh, we got to give props to Major Mundo. He was the funniest one. Yeah. He, was the yeah. he was the best. Yeah, he was the best, and he was so perfectly timed for the space program. Yeah, that was a guy that <laughs> he he caught what the, the I mean the sixties going into the seventies. We were space crazy. We were space crazy, yeah. and he rode that like a yep. rock. Well, he'd, he'd come out dressed in like this old time astronaut's uniform with, a, with an astronaut's helmet on his head. Yeah, the and pressure his, suit, the uh, the pressure suit that they wore. I'll, I'll be BY, I'll be blasting you. That was yep. his thing. And, you know, he he did the Stooges. He did, you know, cartoons. But he was he was just generally a funny guy. Now, I was on Bozo twice, okay? I was on mm. Bozo twice. Wow. Frank Ambrose? Frank wow. Ambrose, okay? Oh, yeah. And, the great guy. Me, great, great guy. <laughs> Bozo wasn't a, you know funny guy okay he was he was the guy who looked like frankly looked like he had a couple of martoonies in him martoonies <laughs> martoonies Pull up some balloons with the kids what's and you t- know what's a martoonie I want one you're talking, you're talking, you're talking Frank Avru she okay. was amazing that guy yeah that was so, a, yeah Frank was, Gamer. but <clears throat> Major Mud we're really going so down scholarly. the here um, he would just do crazy things. He would show up. He, they'd have remotes, and he'd show up. You know, I remember he was down PZ Air Force Base once. He's pretending to fly, fly the airplanes and stuff, and he's just a, a, a kid's kind of entertainer, you know. But he actually had a sense of humor. Wow, and not a scintilla of uh, any kind of uh, wackiness with any of these guys. Not mm-hmm. a scintilla. No, 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 no. I mean, they, they all did stuff. the same show, really. No, right. I mean, but they they were funny. Uh, it was live, you know. I don't think they had a staff of script writers, yeah, yeah. you know, for their stuff. They oh, had yeah, to yeah. show up, ready to play, you know. It was, it was live. It was it was vaudeville uh, for us in the sixties yeah, on TV. Yeah, yep. Raven, you probably don't know what the hell we're talking about, right? I don't. I watched <laughs> Hanna Barbera cartoons. I was a Flintstones kid. 
<laughs> really? Yeah. Interesting yeah. to bring that up. By um, the way, did you know that his boy Elroy uh, had a, a drinking problem because he was never able to break out of child acting? Really? The real uh, what? The real Elroy on the, <laughs> okay, on switch, the Jetsons. He held switch held true to his promise not to you know, introduce any more humans to the show. The Jetsons. His boy Elroy. Yeah. yeah. Now that's funny. You know that kind of his boy Elroy. Oh, come on. Come it's on. Something about I don't acting. get the joke. Yeah, no one gets the joke. <laughs> What is it? Explain it. See, it's a cartoon. I thought, you know, I vaguely it's you were going to start commenting on Judy Jetson's butt. That's usually problem. where this kind of discussion goes. I used to like, Man. I used to like Jane, his wife. <laughs> I like people. the sassy robot slave. <laughs> yeah. Oh wow. What was her name? Rosie. Rosie. Oh, yeah. 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 Which she was a, brought back. She had a mouth on her. Rosie. She did have a mouth. She was great. Easy there. Easy there, big guy. Um, <laughs> you know, Jane did a Rosie sitcom was, that was canceled after twelve episodes. No way. Is that true? With Switch? No, it's not true. <laughs> What's the matter with, with you? Us. <laughs> okay, I've had enough. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, so um, Switch is there ready to blow his brains is... out. What, what was that weapon that you had up to your face, Switch? <laughs> what was yeah, that? No, it's uh, just a, a pass it around. Or... That looks like a. That looks... It's a drill. It's a drill. It looks, looks like drill. a drill. Yeah. Yeah, this movie's about that on oh, cool. cameo, in fact. It's weird how it, uh, yeah, yeah. If you had to do something like that one one, you might have to go to the semi pornographic friends only thing, which I don't mind I don't, doing actually. You, you don't I, mind you know, of no. tasteful nudity? Yeah. How about untasteful I would like, nudity? I would like to have a partner to go with it though. Yeah. Doing it solo oh, is like Lord. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Mrs. Gober is going to ask me, "Hi, you want to get upstairs to bed tonight? How'd the show go?" She always likes that. How'd the show go? How can and you I'm gonna tell her? I'm gonna tell her it was over the top tonight, darling. <laughs> over the top, and we're not even uh, halfway through. How can you forget one one from two weeks ago when the person wrote in and said that your mystique on cameo would have to do with your top secret torpedo technology? Well, I remember that part, but I don't remember about the reprising or doing something from urinating from the rooftop or something. Listen, I, 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 I want to say that. this to you right now, one one. Always wear the Nighthawk condom because I'll never see it coming. That's the important safety <laughs> tip. What? What? All right, 1850. Thank that's you. Good one. What do you mean 1850? Forever you edit. Forever you edit. That, that's ridiculous. Well, that, that, Raven yeah. loved it. Are you kidding me? <laughs> she can buy the uncut You know what you accused me of earlier in the show? Putting, Back on uh, certain parts of my anatomy up on a shelf. You what? don't have any if you don't let that sit in the show. I, uh, that's like okay. one of the oldest jokes in the uh, in, in the business here. Come okay. on, man. It's a good one. A 17 stealth condom. They'll never see you coming. That was their ad. It was great. <laughs> okay. All right. Great. Okay. All right. You want to be doing a top 40 show this time next I, week? I marked, that, I marked that drop, Mac, but, you know, we can just let it slide. Okay. Why don't we go? <laughs> it's one of the topics of the night. Okay. Okay. In in England, um, a section of my book, part of my book, Beyond Area 51, on sale, everyone. Uh, it talks about where is Area 51 in England. Okay, England's a very small place. Um, you can fly from one from the east coast of England to the west coast of England in a modern jet in minutes. Uh, there's not many places to, to hide yet. Um, in the research, we came up with, I think, 10 suspects. Very uh, where that might be Area 51, right? Uh, one of them was this place called, am I pronouncing it right, Bascom Downs? It's actually Bascom Down, no okay. uh, plural. No, no okay. All right. And and it's an air base. A lot of strange things go on there. The, a couple of very strange things have gone on there. Coco, please elaborate. It has a history that goes back all the way to World War One, pre World War One, World Flying Four Days. It's a very interesting spot, but we're focusing in on September 26, 1994, as we say in Europe and in the military, 26 September 94. Uh, there was an aircraft getting ready to take off, runway 23, runway 23, and this aircraft uh, had problems, and the malfunction led to it to abort the takeoff. And the abortive takeoff caused the aircraft to become uh, disabled on the runway. This led to some of the most interesting days uh, post uh, this incident in how this aircraft was recovered. 
and what happened on. Now, today, it's known as MOD for Ministry of Defense, Oscar Bell. Um, obviously, if we had Ross on board, he could provide a rich background to this. But they, as you have, have so eloquently described, Mac, uh, this is one of the Area 51 sites. There's also, as your research has pointed out, some very interesting one in Wales. I'm up on the border with Scotland and up further into the, into the island itself. But this particular case has been linked to the Aurora aircraft. And for those that are able to see the screen behind me, I have some pictures as my screensaver or my background, I should say, uh, showing some of the things that they think may have happened. But there was at this point uh, quite a bit of collaboration between the UK and the US on these aircraft, on possible uh, deep research uh, defense evaluation research agency, which is the UK version of DARPA, as well as Defense Science and Technology Lab, uh, which is a private company. Uh, they were all working uh, collaboratively. And this aircraft, because of what it occurred and how it was handled, is one of those very interesting cases of what just happened here. And almost immediately when the runway shut down, the aircraft was covered uh, very, very quickly with Poplins and, and other devices that were put up to barricade any kind of visual sight. But almost immediately after this aircraft is disabled and getting ready to move, it, uh, special operations, the SAS aircraft, show up. And uh, I have to make a quick nod that they came in via a very special snook that the RAF uses from number seven squadron. They immediately set up a perimeter around this aircraft. So this is not something that happens on a frequent basis. Mm -hmm. uh, this is something that was they're trying not to gather or uh, grant too much attention, but they have to handle it very quickly. So the aircraft is being physically covered up so it can't be easily photographed right. from the sidelines of the base, as well as probably satellites. And then a very special C-12 um Huron, which is a very special DOD transport, shows up. Airplane. Yeah, it's an airplane. That's correct. The C-12. And it's a, uh, as well as an unmarked 707, which Mac has talked about in the past. We've, right. we've spoken about in different shows. There are a number of uh, Air Force and U.S. government uh, large transports uh, of all different kinds. Some look like airliners. They don't have any really distinctive markings. They have very, very small um, round, rondelles that would show that they are Air Force aircraft mm -hmm. or government airplanes. And they're used for a lot of reasons. They allow a certain um, of uh, and camouflage. Yeah, right, they yeah. allow camouflage because they operate like an airline. So right. if you have these aircraft to say they're flying along, they're, they're making the trip to uh, Korea or they're flying a, uh, a polar route that allows them, they could maybe be rigged with uh, intelligence devices. They could even be able to insert special operators that would leave the aircraft and, and do a halo uh, type of insertion. Okay, go ahead. So these aircraft exist. So this aircraft, uh, uh, all these aircraft show up and then a C-5 comes in to, uh, to make uh, kind of the, uh, the final pull-up. And it's interesting because uh, this is where you get into the Jeanette Janet Airlines, which is that uh, outfit that uh, flies between Las Vegas and Area 51 that we right. were speaking about earlier this evening, to move the uh, workers, the engineers, and the other folks that are involved in you know deep research that takes place in Panapa yes, and yes. Area 51. Mm -hmm. If so you land, now, if you land at the airport out there, McClendon Airport. You can see the Janet Airlines staging right. area. It's right there. You know, Janet Airlines basically kind of looks like an airline. But as Coco was saying, there are some people who fly out on Monday morning out of uh, Nellis, out of Nellis Airport, uh, McLaren Airport in Las Vegas. They fly them up to Area 51. They fly them up to Tonopah. These are all like the people who work at these secret bases. Some right. people take the bus. Some Some people are on this like little airline that just basically flies around this big part of Nevada where all this secret stuff is dropping people off, picking people up, but they operate just like a little airline out of that commercial airport. It's kind of strange. 
it is a uh, it's, it's really cool when they uh, put the advertisement up in the uh, professional uh, pilot pages when Jeanette or Janet is hiring uh, folks. Um, it's a uh, very interesting work. I knew one pilot that worked for Janet. He loved it. Obviously, couldn't say very much about it beyond mm-hmm. the what openly understood secret uh, of where they're operating from. But it's a uh, it's a critical way of moving people and also allowing them to have a certain lifestyle uh, where they're able to uh, to live in a more uh, urban area that has uh, those features, like, like Las Vegas, yeah, like Las That's Vegas, cool. baby. So anyway, well, so getting back to Boscombe Down. So in the middle of this, this aircraft is now been tarped. It's been moved. It's got moved into a hangar. We had the SAS deploys around it. Um, very, very careful uh, information being passed out. Uh, not outwardly what I say falsehoods being um, provided to explain what happened and why the runway shut down. But there is no uh, real deeply uh, revealing uh, press conferences or releases of information to explain what happens. Um, a number of people that have reported what they saw say that the aircraft had a lot of design features that were very similar to the YF-23, which was the aircraft that competed with the F-22. Right, it was okay. a Northrop design. And as most people who follow me on this show with you, Mac, know, I believe that's the aircraft which built. It was the superior of the two in my opinion. Uh, in speed and range, what it could provide it. And it, Northrop did an incredible job on the advanced technology. So it makes me think that maybe some of that technology, some of that capability may have been uh, uh, put yep. into future other designs that were out there that were right. doing very specialized reconnaissance and maybe more advanced work than that. So we have a C-5 now that is uh, scheduled. Huge airplane. And planned. Yes, it's the big transport uh, that we have. And it's supposed to head to Ramstein Air Force Base, but it is requested to divert in late in its flight. Hmm. Now, a lot of people have pointed out in this particular case, maybe that uh, going to Ramstein was never the intended target and that they were uh, just using it as ability to throw people off to the last possible minute. I can't believe anyone would think that the government would not tell the truth about where aircraft are going, especially if they're going to recover something like a Aurora uh, right. High technology aircraft. Perish the thought that that would ever occur. So, so if I could just kind of um, encapsulate it. So basically, this something landed in emergency. No, it came right take off and had a had an emergency. Had an emergency, emergency okay. And they aboard the takeoff, and it looks like it may have uh, had landing gear partially collapsed. Okay. That there were and there was a significant enough uh, damage that could not be repaired at site, which kind of lends to the high technology into what this aircraft. Yeah, so they tank. just man. so they cover it. They kind of cover it over. They throw a lot of security around it. They're bringing in these different airplanes to finally carry this thing out. Right. Now this is 1994, so it's not a stealth fighter because the stealth fighter had already been, you know. Right. This is up. something that we all have have talked about that we think existed and may have actually. It's it's a providence that you bring up the stealth fighter, Mac, because many of us believe that there was something else that was flying during Desert Storm that helped uh, provide the targeting and provided the uh, the terminal uh, targeting for many of the uh, things that were delivered by the 117, which was yeah, earlier yeah. mentioned in regards to uh, one one and some personal situation he was uh, trying to work out. Who remembers I'm that getting at that? what I'm getting at here. Uh, is that the 117, because it was so dedicated to its stealth capabilities, which were phenomenal, it did mm-hmm. not have any real strong ability to put electronic devices that would transmit uh, out to give it uh, positioning and guidance that it would need for navigation as well as target acquisition. Yep. Something else in the air that was able to provide uh, last, so. uh, the terminal area for the target kind of guidance. There was, and I was, I was happy to be there. And I remember this was a constant kind of low buzz that we talked about. It was incredible what the aircraft was doing. It is an incredible aircraft. I had a couple of folks that worked with me that flew 117s, tremendous airplane, but it really did not have incredible breakthrough technology in the mm-hmm. delivery systems as much as the stealth made it invisible right. to be seen. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. This would lens to, that this aircraft working out of Europe, things that I've talked about in the past with Ross about other bases, 
these incredible um, um, intel surveillance and reconnaissance missions and results that we get out of it kind of lends that we've had something that was the follow on maybe to the SR-71 or something in a similar vein, maybe not as fast, maybe not as high, but had incredible uh, ability to, to keep radar uh, signatures very low, but still be able to do incredible work. Maybe this is what we're talking how, about. How big was it? The size of a fighter? We're, I would say that probably between something of a fighter and a fighter bomber type aircraft. How do you know uh, it wasn't a, 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 an early version of the F-22? Well, that is a very small airplane, and the mm-hmm. way that would never would have had the kind of um, uh, the kind of pageantry that went around it when okay. it had its uh, its accident or when it had its mishap. The interesting thing, let me close up on the C five. When the C five loads up, whatever this aircraft is, which was done in, in the uh, uh, under darkness, under cover, tarped, and moves on board, it immediately flies back to uh, Plant Forty Two which is the United States of Plant uh, 42. And that's the home of the most advanced technology. And that's where Skunk Works uh, has it, as well as Northrop Grumman and Boeing. They all have um, hangars and facilities at this base. Near LA. Near LA. It's in Burbank. Isn't it in Burbank? Uh, I think uh, U.S. Plant 42 is a little bit further out from there. It's closer to the Palmdale, which gets you in. Oh, Palmdale. Okay, yeah, right. right. Well, you know, wouldn't we have known by now? I mean, this happened back in 94. You know, a lot of time has gone by. You know, usually the secret planes are kind of revealed when the next one is about to. I think I, I agree, Mac. You would think it would come out. But there's something interesting to me about the whole flying triangle, black triangle, and the black budgets business that's gone on. I think that there may have been a series of airplanes around this particular shape and design that has um, absorbed a lot of a lot of currency, a lot of budget that has had a very break, uh, absolutely technology breaking and operationally uh, breaking capabilities, but also probably came at very very high cost in a number of areas. Kind of the things that you've alluded to in some of your books, where you know you have. Uh, air crews that have, that have suffered because of flying the vehicle, um, the kind of uh, the inability to make it uh, a, a mass uh, aircraft, and I think that the technology and the and the cost of it provided uh, breakouts and breakthroughs into fleet aircraft that show up later on. So I think that that's probably partially what's happened here, and I don't think that we're ever going to fess up until much later after uh, the aircraft is is done and it's it's no longer part of it yeah yeah what that capability is and that's what we did with the SR71 and i the SR71 was flying 10 15 years before anybody fessed up it was probably responsible for a number of ufo reports because no one really knew what it was yep and i think that this is probably the same thing but the TR3 the black manta the uh, when you look at tacit blue, all these other aircraft that were all surrounding around stealth, uh, high speed, and other capabilities, I I think this is where you find yourself really catching up where all this is, and I think it also translated into a, a lot of the technology and our unmanned our UAVs that use a combination of stealth and high time endurance to do some of the operations. In this case. Uh, the the RQ one seventy Sentinel. I think they're all connected. I just, just think to, this was a rate for prime then. Just to wrap it up, the the best story I heard I read was um, in Ben Rich's book about stealth aircraft. Yes, Ben, ben Rich was like the chief engineer for the stealth fighter, he, and, he, tre- and tremendous guy, tremendous man. And so now this is the big day. They put together the stealth fighter. It's going to take off from Nellis Air Force Base in Nevada. At Las, in Las Vegas, and they have a radar station 100 miles out in the desert. And they turn it on, and basically the test is, is this thing going to be picked up on radar? So this is a big, big, big deal. And all these officers are there and contractors and stuff. They're all gathered around this radar screen, and sure enough, a blip shows up. And they all just like, man, man, fell to pieces, right? This whole thing down the drain. But it turned out it was the photo plane the plane that they send up with it to take pictures of it. They did not pick up the self fighter on radar. 
And uh, when you really think about it, man, that's quite a technology. That's quite a an advancement in technology to have something flying around out there that doesn't show up in radar. Uh, you know, that's that. I think that's quite the. Uh, it's amazing the leap technology. in technology. You know, I mean, it is. It's, it's pretty amazing. Mac, can you see the uh, screen? Oh, there it is. Uh, oh, yeah. The background. Okay. Read Radio that show. ad out. That this was an ad that the, the that Air Forces Monthly had put out, which was a huge publication in Europe. I mean, they had the best pictures. They did all the air shows. These guys were tremendous. They, it, it looks like a cross between an SR seventy one and an F twenty two or twenty three. Yeah, isn't it pretty amazing? And it, and the ad said, "Did you see this plane crash at Bascom Down?" On September 26, nineteen ninety four. Factor fix. Judge for yourself in the February issue of. Air Force's month. That is based on the few eyewitness reports, what they thought they were seeing on right. the runway at 20, huh. which is that yeah. infamous black triangle air bomb. Well, a lot of people see that. So um, why don't we go to a commercial break now? Uh, you're listening to Mac Maloney's Military x show here on the Distant Thunder Radio Network. Thank you, Coco, for that report. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. You deserve a round shot. And um, we'll be right back after this. Please stay tuned. I was in the hospital with my son for 18 months. When he got injured, I wasn't prepared, but I knew I had to be strong. When I was told about John's injury, I was in complete shock. I just remember rushing into his room and giving him a big hug and letting him know I was there. These veterans and families are just a few of the heroes we serve at Homes for Our Troops. For thousands of severely injured veterans, everyday life is filled with barriers. It was really the, the little things throughout the house. Counters that you can't roll up to. I had to drag my wheelchair down steps. I want to help, but he is so determined. At Homes for Our Troops, we build specially adapted custom homes with features like wheelchair access, roll-in showers, and automatic door openers that allow them to function independently and focus on their recovery and family. This house is freedom. It's hope. It's a new beginning. This house has given me my family back. To learn more, visit hfotusa.org. British Secret Service. Hello, money, baby. Hello, 007. How's your mission to steal the secret sex formula from Dr. No No going? It'll be going fine, ship from the two idiots headquarters shin with me. Hey Mac, did Defolo Crumpus just call us idiots? Yes, he did one one. He's an ungrateful putz. Nice car though. Yeah, and you know what? Now it's my turn. To... But if you drive, what am I going to do? I- I'll drive you shoot the machine guns. So no good. way, I'm Get driving too now. I just have a license for you and I'm driving. See what I mean, Money Penny? But James, we have to get the stolen formula, Dr. No No, before the big two for one sale. I'm on it, Money Penny, but I've got to rid myself of these two mush mouths first. What? Huh? I still have the red button, don't I? James, not the red button. Cobra, save us. <laughs> Hello, gentlemen. And you, Mr. Bond. Oh, my God. Is that Commander Cobra? Jumping from a helicopter through the shuttle roof of my Ashton Martin? Well played, Cobra. But what are you doing here? Besides rescuing my two friends, James, I'm here to tell you that you don't have to steal the cardio sex formula from Dr. No-No. All you have to do is go online and order it yourself. And then you'll have plenty of the new energy drink that can give you the extra endurance you need to get through. Please, Cobra, tell us why it's called sex. It's called SEX for Strength Energy Accelerator. And it's easy to use. Just mix a scoop of water, shake it, not stir it. 30 minutes before you start your workout, and you'll find you can last longer and feel all around better about finishing your regime. Oh, my. And the mix comes in many different flavors. My favorite is passion fruit. Mine, too. Why, you little trollop. Hey, Mac, look at all these buttons. I wonder what they do. I don't know. Push one and find out. Not, not, not the, the big red, red one. No! Jeez, I hope he's wearing his rocket belt. Guess not. That's SEX Workout Dietary Supplement, available only through Cardillo USA. Visit CardilloUSA.com for more details about our big two-for-one sale. That's C-A-R-D-I-L-L-O-U-S-A.com. And get some sex today.
Welcome back, everyone, to Mac Maloney's Milk Tracks, our show here on the Distant Thunder Radio Network. This is Mac Maloney. Wow, what a show we have you tonight. We're talking about everything. Let me introduce the members of the posse, okay? The very famous Juan Juan is here, Juani. Yes, sir. Mac, how are you? How is everybody doing tonight? I hate to ask this, but yeah. what are you wearing tonight? Who are you wearing? Uh, Stone's hat, black shirt, shorts. I'm really a uh, cash uh, my Harry Potter, oh, yeah, my Harry Potter glasses. Okay, so you're out of the uh, Mikos, the Greek fisherman. Right, I'm not. I'm not going. Vibe. I'm not going Greek tonight. Oh, whoa! <laughs> anyway, time to move on. Up there in his bunker, compound. I mean, Commander Cobras. Yeah. As always, Mac. A pleasure to join the party. Be part of the. Uh, <laughs> Slip uh-huh. that in. There we go. That just in. Okay. You didn't hear me. I said middle-aged lady. I know. I heard you, and that's why right. I said we had to slip that. Just had to slip that in. Okay. They're in uh, the Bowl of Flakes. A national correspondent, Switchblade Steve Ward. Switchy. Great to be here tonight, Mac. Good to see and you, also, Switchy. Good to see you, Switch. Having yes. fun so far? I'd rather see the donuts, frankly. <laughs> but also, the beauty among the beasts. Our good friend Raven is with us up there in upstate New York. Raven. Raven. Two bun night. For having me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Wow. Well. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I guess I, I guess that sage smoke is no, no, no. The sage smoke has caught up. Got you know, it's, it's been a long evening. I, I thought you heard the other shoe. Yeah. yeah. But, no, I mean, oh, that was. Oh, that's okay. It's All right. A, nice. It's a it's a trippy tropics. What is that? What's what's trippy that? tropics? No doubt about that. Is that a beer? Strawberry, coconut, pineapple, oh. and vanilla fruited sour. 6.2%. So oh, wow. Nice. Is that a beer tree um, product? It's a beer tree beer. Man, yeah. I got to go up and get some of that beer tree stuff. I got to go up there and visit. Road trip. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it looks good. I'm sitting here drinking a Bud Light that someone left at my door. <laughs> uh, literally. Someone left at your door? As it, as it turned out, yeah. <laughs> these, these do you happen. know who? Hey, hey, the, the, I know the initials, CC. Hey, do you eat all those meals scones? On wheels? Kind of a Meals on Wheels. It was a See, Meals on Wheels, as it turns out. Yes, I, but I don't. Mac knows. I, I just leave a message for him, and I tell him I'm 20 minutes out with a speedball to drop off, not to be confused with uh, <laughs> yeah, drug, drug paraphernalia. Or <laughs> it doesn't mean that culture. kind of speedball, folks. It's the military term of a speedball. <laughs> and uh, I, what I had was Ross's scones, which Ross had made a special batch of scones mm, oh. just for Mac. There you go. So I put those on ice. They're really and good. Then, and then I had a selection of beers. Mac does not like the uh, the more exotic beers that I do, but I had Bud Lights and I, I gave him a nice and some hard uh, hard uh, water. Hard What's that? Uh, what do you call that? The thing that kids are crazy about, Raven? Truly? The, uh, Truly claws stuff? and hard all these candy? other ones. Hard, oh, no, not, white, oh, White Claw, Hard white Seltzer? Claws. Yeah, yeah, Hard Seltzer. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, hard seltzer. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'll have one of those when I'm feeling bougie, but yeah. typically I'm a beer drinker. Yeah, me too. I don't even like the taste of beer. Uh, I, your father and I have gone around on this a yeah. couple of times. I don't like the taste of beer. The only reason I drink beer is to get the buzz. I, I don't, I'm not, I don't know. I think it tastes kind of weird, but anyway, you'd never know it, huh? <laughs> well, well, you got to stop drinking that half and rougher. That's all I can, all I can say. Remember that? I used to steal that from oh. my father. <laughs> <clears throat> always love anyway. decoding the inside of the bottle cap on the half and wrappers. Uh, you know, the little, is that the they little have the little pictogram. message on them. Yeah. yeah little pictograms where they used to have little yeah. pictograms oh, really? in them. Yeah. Yeah. I was too young to read. The anyway. Pictures, <laughs> act, the pictures. You didn't actually, <laughs> okay. that was the whole idea of the pictogram. You didn't actually, you know, it was like universal. Okay. Remember in Mad Magazine right. on the outer border, there'd be these little things. I think they called them Portra Zebes or something. There'd be a little on that magazine, yeah. The little drawings on the, the little on, on the, the margin, yeah. yeah. You'd yeah. be you'd be wrecked up to your up to the heavens, you know. And you're you're reading Mad Magazine again for the tenth time. You see, oh my yeah. God, look at this one. Oh man, what was that? I didn't see imagine that. the guy oh. who did that, you know, because they're just one little cartoons, you know, and yeah. something that had to happen in that one little space, and they were really freaky. I don't want to go down the Mad Magazine road here, but. When that was funny, that was funny. Was, oh, my God. That was, those like, guys really, were, really when funny. they were at the top of their game, they were unstoppable. Yeah. Then they didn't yeah. like anything else. They kind of peed it up. 
Mort and, Drucker as yep. the, uh, the the artist for most of the TV and movie satires. I mean, mm-hmm. perfect. And I and, and this is, would be back in the era of some of our favorite shows, like the the Fugitive, Star Trek, Star Trek, Lost in Smoke. And, and, and what was what was some of the uh, satirical names? I remember some of them. Uh, the Fugitive was the Pugitive, <laughs> Loused Up in Space, Voyage yeah, yeah, to See What's at the Bottom. Voyage to See What's at the Bottom. Yeah, right, I remember that, right. man. Do you remember and the it, movies that they did, Mac? They would do like a, a, a pictorial of movies. I remember the one they did on Five Easy Pieces, which was like a huh. major uh, event for me because my parents, for some reason, thought that I could go see that movie with them. <laughs> uh, on a Saturday Jack, at the Granada Jack Theater, Theater watched was good. one one when I to say Granada. The Granada Theater. and Malden? He was a sneak we, in. Oh. Yeah. There's memory lane there. Yeah. And Mad Magazine did a their kind of parody on five easy pieces. And I'll never forget how they drew the characters in that. It was just amazing, their <laughs> interpretation. And they did have all kinds of movies. And and what what my truck of the detail that he would put oh, into God. tremendous. I, just one frame had so much going on, and then it was crazy. And then then they on the other end of the scale they had Don Martin who would do all those crazy oh, crazy yes. songs, and they were so bizarre and weird, you know, in the drawings are weird. Uh, okay, so for let's the, let, let's let's try to bring Raven back into the for, conversation. for the third time tonight. Raven, do you have any idea what we're talking about? Mad Magazine. I know what Mad Magazine is. Really? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. Spy versus Spy. Yes. Spy right. Versus yeah. Spy Mad Magazine. Okay. That's good. I'm not, you know, a fetus. Okay. I know what things are. What? We know. Wow. We know, Ray. Right back at you, kiddo. Is that some right kind of spirit you. or something? <laughs> okay. I think that's Ray, the first time that fetus? word's ever been used I don't know. Show. I'm, I'm <laughs> well, Max House, <laughs> you probably do have to pretty <laughs> safe and start talking about fetuses. Oh, my God. I got to tell you, that's the first time that word has ever been added on the show. Well, I, I marked the tape. Let's rewind the tape. <laughs> A fetus? <laughs> fetus? <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> fetus? <laughs> Oh, it sounds like point. something else. Breaking, hey guys, play it back again. Fetus? Switchy. I think we better go to page two. Go ahead. Uh, page two. Well, listen, uh, now, Matt, earlier oh. you mentioned uh, your book on sale everywhere no. beyond Area 51. And people think that uh, we're used to thinking of, you know, a very kind of egocentric that Area 51 is the be all end all of these secret places. But it's not, is it? Hell no, no, really. Uh, seriously, it's just one of many. There's a lot of them around the world. I think we did 14 or 15 in, in the book. But one of the best places, uh, I mean, that I, I liked doing the research on and I had never heard of until, you know, we started doing the book was this place called Kapustin Yar. OK, it's in Russia. It's basically Russia's version of if you if you combine Cape Canaveral and Area 51, that would be Kapustin Yar. Because it's a launch facility where they put a lot of their military stuff in space, but you know other stuff too. But it's also where they like do all their experiments. There's a nuclear storage facility there. Uh, it's very very secret, but everyone knows where it is. Um, but it has a very interesting history, and and the, it has a very interesting UFO history because uh, Stalin himself gave the order that if the, anyone, anyone is flying over Kapustin, yeah, it's not supposed to be there. You're supposed to shoot them down. And I think when he gave that order, he thought that, you know, all these things that they saw flying around this place were just American spy planes or who knows what they were and basically shoot them down. But it turns out that a lot of times the pilots were what they were going up, what they were, um, scrambled to go up and check out. You know, weren't exactly um, earthly airplanes or earthly machines. They were, you know, what we would call UFOs. And 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 there's, like I said, there's a long history of UFOs, you know, hanging around this place uh, once it was built in the late 40s. Now, what gives that part of this credibility is that there is a woman, I think her name was Popovich. Yes. Something like that, where she was like a hero, literally a hero of the Soviet Union. She was a jet fighter pilot and exper- uh, she uh flew the X-planes, Russian X-planes. She was a test pilot. She did all this, and she was just as famous in Russia as, as Chuck Yeager was in the United States, to tell you the truth. And she wrote five, six books, and in one of them, she just comes clean. She says, we used to be scrambled to go up and, you know, try to shoot down these saucer-shaped things. We didn't know what they were. I mean, she gives this really, really vivid description of having dogfights with UFOs. Now, if you can imagine Chuck Yeager doing that in this country in his heyday, 
uh, how different it would be anyway. So um, it, it, there's, there's really some really detailed UFO crashes and stuff like that. So if you get a chance, you should, you know, like Google it, Kapustin Ya. Well, I think, I think, I think it was UFO Glassnost was a book that she wrote that revealed some of this material. Mm-hmm. And, and, and she had a lot of credibility because, you know, why, why go through that? You know, if you, you're already a hero of the workers or whatever, she was already at the pinnacle uh, to come out and say that UFOs were that real. But but another strange thing happened there, too, is that um, is later on, like in the I think it happened in the 80s, um, they had a UFO sighting there. And what it was, was this UFO came down right on top of the nuclear storage facility that they have at this place, Kapustin, yeah, and it, and it hovered there. And 30 people saw it and, um, and, and, and kind of floated around. Then it took off. Then it came back. It did all this, these UFO things that they seem to do. And um, um, so they reported it. And um, what happened was the KGB came in and the KGB, you know, questioned the witnesses. And the witnesses all gave the same story that this strange thing was floating around. And you have to think, well, why would you lie to the KGB? You don't. No. Okay. So. That's really good testimony. Uh, and so years later, uh, one of the Rockefeller brothers actually paid for a, um, you know, to, uh, an investigation of it. He, he uh, created a white paper and gave it to Clinton when Clinton was president and then, you know, was never seen again. But, um, yeah, Kapustin, yeah, very interesting place. You know, Google it. Here's the thing about this uh, Kapustin, yeah, was that it was started, you know, like at the end of World War II. And lots of the Nazi German scientists mm-hmm. came over to our side, the Western side. That's a whole other story, the whole paperclip operation. Uh, you know, they tried to, you know, be captured by the Americans and the British. And a lot of them weren't so lucky and they were captured by the Russians. And uh, the Russians sent them to Kapust. And yeah, they, they actually, that's what actually started. It was these captured Nazi scientists kind of built the place just like, Free Nazi scientists helped us in our space program, but they actually this is this is the Russians' fire. They actually built a secret city right next to this place. I mean, it's literally a huge city that that really doesn't have a name. And all the people who are assigned to live there work at Kapustin Yar. And um, I get a I get a feeling it's not like a real happy place to work. And I also feel, and it's out in the middle of nowhere. I mean, it's near Volgograd, wherever the hell that is. Well, but well, wasn't there another like a town or village? that they decided they moved everybody out and just leveled yep. it because it was they too close it, yeah. to see yeah. what was going on. Yep. And it was like, kind of like get out. Okay. And boom, you're gone, you know? And, um, um, and we were telling the middle of nowhere and not, not on the border of the, of the country. That's why I always thought, I mean, at first I thought, well, if Stalin gives this order, like I said, he, it's like shooting at, at basically the Western spy planes, but we were like in the middle of nowhere, unless they're talking about U2s, which fly too, too high for them to scramble to intercept anyway. I don't know, but it's a it's an interesting place. Kapustinya, uh, you know, Google it. I mean, it was it was a lot of fun kind of researching. Now there was a, there's another one in Australia. Pine bush. No. Pine gap. Pine, pine gap. Yeah. That's pine a, bush is in New York. <laughs> pine bush is in New York. Pine it's bush is right next you... to uh, Raven, which probably knows about that it's place. Right down the road. Did you ever see any UFOs there, Raven? Pine bush. I've never been there, unfortunately. No. I'm trash, so I can't no, go there. No, don't say that. <laughs> What's to say that there isn't UFOs floating around Johnson City? I mean, that's there might it's also, be. It's also the but, name um, of an X-rated movie, as it turns out. But look, also it could be a foot fetish in grabbing shoes. You so you know that, that <laughs> okay, going here on. We go. and, and here you we wouldn't go. even have the in, you know the slightest clue. But Pine Gap <laughs> is one of those really incredible. Places. So this is a place. It's it's literally in the the center of Australia, out in the middle of the desert. Nothing around there except there's a small town next to it, and and basically what it is and what we know it is, it's an NSA listening station, and it's from when you hear the NSA can go through every email sent around the world every day, every second of the day. Correct. This is one of the places that makes that work, and um, um. But the other things uh, go on out there, too. Like, there's, like, an air base out there, and lots of people work there. It's a, supposed to be a joint Australian-U.S. kind of command, but it's basically the U.S. So, so, and then there's a very small, like, little village next to it, which also has this kind of UFO-type thing, and odd things go on there and stuff. 
But the interesting thing about this place is that you can you can get not you can get kind of closer, much closer to it than you can get to Area 51. In fact, people go and they camp, and I guess you you can kind of see it off in the distance, but still see it. And um, there was these guys who went out there, and I think it was in the 60s, and they saw you know what they said was this huge spacecraft come down, and this kind of communication between the people and the flying saucer and people on on the ground and so on. And if I remember it right, they wrote this in the 60s. And when you watch Close Encounters of the Third Kind, that terrible movie, it seems like they were describing what you see in the movie, this kind of grand kind of meeting between you know, humans and aliens and so on. And, and it's just kind of odd that they wrote that uh, before the movie even came out, unless one one's buddy Steven Spielberg stole it from the moon. <laughs> he probably did. That. Yeah, he did. And it seems like there's been a lot of situations. I know they were looking for a missing child once. People were out there doing other things, Creepy and things. they would catch some of these strange objects. And uh, weren't several of them seen, like, going into the side of mountains and right. that kind yeah. of thing? Yep. We, we do know that you can – I've been told that you can land planes in to the side of a mountain if you do it right. And uh, I don't know how often they do it, but, but, you know, I've talked to people who have seen C-130s come out of the – side of a mountain out in Nevada and so on. But anyway, um, yeah, it went with the people who lived in that, in that little town. I think that they are the people who, I don't want to say they're the, uh, they're the help, but I think they're the maintenance people and so on who work at this place. So you have to have some kind of a clearance, but strange things happen in that place. Like you say, people go missing. And uh, I think when there was a someone who was missing and when they sent out the search party, that's when they found all these odd things out near Pine Gap, you know, and saw all these kind of strange things. But the people there must, they, 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 if they, if a lot of them work at the facility, then they must have some kind of a, you know, have to, you know, sign a non-disclosure agreement or something. You know, they, they, they're kind of working with the people there. But on the other hand, they do report all this, like, really kind of strange stuff. And the, the place does exist. I mean, there's everything in there saying that in that mountain, there's a huge antenna that allows the U.S. to talk to all the submarines under the water without using radio or something. It's crazy. And, and it's like a lot of things. There's a lot of speculations. A lot of it is nonsense. But the place does exist, Pine Gap, Australia. And it's and it's very kind of, um, I don't want, yeah, creepy, spooky. There's a, there's a real kind of spooky edge around it that Area 51 doesn't have because, like, lots of odd things happen there that aren't necessarily UFO-related, you know? How's that switch? Well, Go ahead. Not, Brad, not very good. I think people should buy that book. Is there a, is there um, a TV documentary so. about that or not? I don't think so. Yeah. I, I There's a really interesting so. TV series on Netflix that uh, did a couple of seasons. So talking they, about the, that's kind of a soap opera they did down there. shows that the uh, uh, CCP has agents outside Pine Gap, you know, working as yeah. construction well, people. Believe. And yeah, it's really uh, interesting. But I do know a couple of people that served. Down there, it's actually quite a uh, good assignment in the NSA, but it's a very tough one. You know, there's just not a lot there. There's just so, basically the work. Literally out in the middle of nowhere. You, it, you don't get a lot of uh, uh, a lot of uh, hu uh, humanitarian leaves like up to Sydney or Melbourne and places like that. That just doesn't occur that often. Right. But it's uh, quite a feather uh, of accomplishment, feather in the cap of accomplishments to, uh, to do a tour there. And it does provide critical. I mean, we used uh, Australia as a critical manning facility for oh, yeah. a lot of the manned space work because it provided uh, communications uh, for our, you know, fledgling uh, space program when uh, we were doing orbits around the Earth. Raven has a question. She's raising her hand. No, I just, I'm trying to think, maybe I have my, my whole timeline off, but as far as... Um, the, the the spookiness um, was Ivan Milat um, operating the, at the same time in this general area, or was that like different time, different place, everything? Who? He's a serial killer in um, oh, Australia. Okay, all right. I, I wondered who the hell who you were talking about. Okay, all right. In Australia, he was a serial killer. Yeah, I can't remember like what date range he he operated from but i didn't know if maybe those two intertwined well if he was out 
if he was a serial killer out in Pine Gap, he'd soon run out of people to kill because like there's like nothing out there. I mean, it's That's what's his true. name again? Give me the name again. Ivan Millet. Ivan Millet. Okay, serial killer oh. down in Australia. Yeah, it should come right up. He's like the most prolific one in Australia. Wow. Huh? I have to wonder which which Nazis were happier, the ones that came over here with paperclip or the ones the, the Russians uh, kidnapped? I think they're much happier over here, to tell you the truth. Okay, he's, he's 1989 to 1993. Oh. Okay. He was in New South Wales, which is uh, really one of, the, I think, the greatest parts of Australia. Spent a lot of time there. Is that the one that's the island or is that no, New Zealand? That's, that's Tasmania. 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 I was yeah. so close. New Zealand is right off the coast, though. It's almost the same thing. Uh, we have a lot of <laughs> listeners in New Zealand, so I sh- it is a nice place. So I, that's I where uh, Mrs. Coco and I had our first date. It was uh, Christchurch, New Zealand. Really? So yeah. cool. Really? Wow. wow. Hi, New really Zealand. Cool. We love you guys. That's awesome, Coco. And that oh, was also the uh, site of the uh, the jetpack that I was preparing to test fly. That do remember Mac a few years back? I had some excellent stimulator and we yes. were getting ready to fly. They they were out of uh, New Zealand as well. Sadly, really? that yeah. that project did not work out. Uh, get for off the, the U.S. side of it, no, it, it, they flew it. Uh, mm-hmm. it, it. It fly, but it just did not um, work out to uh, to make the big leap into the commercial. Uh, well, you food. can't carry enough fuel to to keep your wheel going all a long time, right? And that's that basically one, basically, the problem. That one could stay in the air, depending on the weight of the uh, pilot occupant. Was like a thirty to forty five minute. Um, and that's not bad. It was it was pretty uh, pretty interesting aircraft. It really wasn't a jet pack where it was using jet thrust it used a series of of uh, prop rotors that were inside okay um, uh ducting and then you were able to maneuver it around i i enjoyed flying the simulator quite a bit i thought it was a great project i was looking forward to you know, too, too big to have one you could have donned a secret identity yeah you know, jet boy and you could have uh, you know jet boy uh, I don't think so. about jet boy yeah jet boy <laughs> how about jet guy yeah. Jet guy. Jet guy. No, I don't know. No. Okay. Jet boy's got a ring to it. How about just Cobra or Coco? How uh, about that? <laughs> Coco, maybe. Was that like the jet pack in the Thunderball movie? Yeah. In the middle. Oh, those, are, those, those, are, those are thrust producing jets. Yeah. Great mm-hmm. system, by the way. But as Mac was alluding, you had about someplace between 15 and about 20 minutes of, of flight time with them. If that, um, yeah. Now, the guys that you really want to see is the Gravity Company. It's an outfit out of uh, England. I actually know the uh, the uh, the chief uh, test pilot of that. That's a system where they have a backpack that throws thrust, and then they have thrusters that you actually keep on your hands. And the work that they're doing with that is unbelievable. Unbelievable. Uh, very quick to teach people how to use it. They've got all kinds of really cool things. The that may be one of the most practical uh, transport uh, capabilities of the jetpack out there right now. I can't wait to get my jetpack. Um, so listen, um, why don't we do this? Why don't we take a commercial break now? And uh, we'll be right back. You're listening to Mac Mooney's Mill Talks. I'll show here on the Distant Thunder Radio Network. Please stay tuned. UFOs are found in Renaissance art, on ancient coins, and etched on cave walls. They're even reported in the Bible. But more surprising is when UFOs are seen the most in times of war. Through centuries, thousands of UFO sightings have been made by high-ranking officials, military pilots, and ordinary soldiers. Often, these fantastic appearances occur at the height of great battles. From World War I to D-Day to Korea, Vietnam, and beyond, military investigators are baffled. Why do UFO sightings spike so drastically during wartime? Could it be mistaken aircraft, or is someone, or something, looking in on us? In UFOs in wartime, what they didn't want you to know, Mac Maloney chronicles centuries of these incredible sightings and tries to solve the puzzle of why so many UFOs are seen while humanity is at war. Read about the scare ships, the ghost planes, and the ghost rockets, alien giants in the jungles of Vietnam, UFOs controlling our ICBM bases, dogfights with flying saucers during the Gulf War, and more. 300 pages of unbelievable stories, along with many startling photographs. That's UFOs in Wartime, What They Didn't Want You to Know, by Mac Maloney. 
on sale at your local bookstore or on Amazon.com. British Secret Service. Hello, money, baby. Hello, 007. How's your mission to steal the secret sex formula from Dr. No No going? It'll be going fine, except for the two idiots headquarters shit with me. Hey, Mac, did Defolo Krumpus just call us idiots? Yes, he did, one one. He's an ungrateful putz. Nice car, though. Yeah, and you know what? Now it's my turn to. But if you drive, what am I going to do? I- I'll drive you, shoot the machine guns. So no way, I'm you driving. Drive it too, I'm just driving. a license for you and I'm driving. Oh, see what I mean, Money Penny? James, we have to get the stolen formula from Dr. No-No before the big two-for-one sale. I'm on it, money man, but I've got to rid myself of these two mushrooms first. Uh, well, uh, I still have the red button, don't I? James, not the red button. Cobra, save us. Hello, gentlemen. And you, Mr. Bond. Oh, my God. Is that Commander Cobra? Jumping from a helicopter through the shadow roof of my Ashton Martin? Well played, Cobra. But what are you doing here? Besides rescuing my two friends, James, I'm here to tell you that you don't have to steal the cardio sex formula from Dr. No-No. All you have to do is go online and order it yourself. Then you'll have plenty of the new energy drink that can give you the extra endurance you need to get through. Please, Cobra, tell us why it's called sex. It's called SCX for Strength Energy Accelerator. And it's easy to use. Just mix a scoop of water, shake it, not stir it. 30 minutes before you start your workout, and you'll find you can last longer and feel all around better about finishing your regime. Oh, my. And the mix comes in many different flavors. My favorite is passion fruit. Mine, too. Why, you little trollop. Hey, Mac, look at all these buttons. I wonder what they do. I don't know. Push one and find out. Not, not, not the, the big red, red, red one. No. Geez, I hope he's wearing his rocket belt. Guess not. That's SCX Workout Dietary Supplement, available only through Cardillo USA. Visit CardilloUSA.com for more details about our big two-for-one sale. That's C-A-R-D-I-L-L-O-U-S-A.com. And get some sex today. Welcome back, everyone, to Mac Maloney's Military Exile Show here on the Distant Thunder Radio Network. This is Mac Maloney. Wow, what a show tonight. And uh, we still got a way to go. So let me introduce the members of the gang. Well, I want to say posse, but I have to say gang. Girls of very famous Juan Juan is here. Yes, sir. Hello, everybody. Mac, how's No longer going? Mikos. No longer Mikos. That's in the past. That's right. Also, I did like that um, look. Go ahead. I do like that look, though. I'll go back. You did well? Yeah. Okay, never say never, right? That's right. I liked it. It was me. Good. Um, Mills, Gills, and Gigi Gills. Coco is here. <laughs> Good evening, sir. As always, a privilege. You're listening to me. Um, let's see. Does everybody Good know what that, what that mnemonic means? Mills, Gilfs, and whatever, blah, blah, blah. blah. Hey, no, what, what, why, why do we have to? Why do we have to go into that? Come on. <laughs> These people have the internet. One, one. Right. Take a look it the up. Internet. Sure, you know the internet. The yeah. internet. What is that? Right. Oh, whoa. Easy there, Raven. Easy. That's where you're going to get the definition. Next thing you know, you're going to be talking about uh, rusty trombones and dirty sand. Come on, no, girl. no, 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 no. Stop, 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 no, stop. Up there in the bowl of flakes, Battle Creek, Michigan, the Battle Creek of the Republic, National Correspondent Switchblade Steve Ward. Great to be here tonight. Switchy. Okay, you had uh, what you have today? It was big. I remember that. Yeah, biscuits and gravy. Biscuits, biscuits and, gravy, and gravy. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Bob Evans. Eggs over With easy. Eggs. White toast and white toast. Biscuits that gravy is good. Orange juice, you say. which Why was no followed bacon? up by a salami Coffee. sandwich with mayo. Oh, that's right. Not too it. much for mayo. Hey, Liz, why, why no one bacon today, Switchy? Looking well, at the. I, uh, I mean. Sausage biscuits and gravy. And, oh, you oh, sa- I didn't hear toast, the sausage. Okay. Yeah. Well, no, it's in the gravy. Max. Well, listen. Yeah. Uh, no, we have to let me introduce. Uh, you know, our other co-host Raven is with us. Raven. Hello. 
I'm I, here. I'm going back to switch because he wasn't on last week. And there's two things we have to apologize to you for switching. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. We did a bit where, um, uh, listeners wrote in to, with their suggestions on the name of our new rock band. Yeah. Okay. And it was things like, um, you know, Juan Juan and the Buns and, and the Buntles and things like that, right? Ridiculous Big Mac stuff. and the Fries I thought was good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good one. Okay. But one of them was, uh, <laughs> what was it? Something Blue, Something Switchy? Let me look as it the, up. Hang on. Because the can't... name of the band was that? <laughs> okay. I'm going to pull up the email. So, um Top, top 10 band yourselves. names. Yeah, we top. thought it would be soft jazz. That'd be a good name for soft jazz if we went in that direction. Switch, you're not laughing. I don't know why. So, well, I, 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 Raven is doing some research switch. to you find out laugh. what, uh, what. Hey, Raven, what? I want yes. you to check my background. That's the Star Child Fetus from 2001, a Cooper production. <laughs> Third time, uh, that's over my shoulder. That word's been mentioned on the show. But the other one, Switch, um, which we should send you a. Uh, note of apology on was the name of the band suggested was switching the baby sausages. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry Where about that. Did you find that. it? Switching the baby. I don't know. I remember that. Yeah, remember that? There he is. Yeah, he's shooting <laughs> himself again in the head with the drill. And drawing his eyes. Oh, we just got to just going for the cheap laugh. So I like, okay. Uh, Sorry. okay, well, that's, 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 that's I like the, the pigs, go. the okay, pigs thanks. in the blanket. I like that. Drop the F word, switch. That was fair. It was fair to take this. What were the other ones? What was what was the other ones? Some of them were funny. Um, the Buntles, I that I remember. Mm-hmm. It was uh, one one and the buns. One one and the buns. Oh, two in the hat. Coco had one. Billy Club. Um, yes. <laughs> Coco and the coconuts. That's from an old one. Um, anyway, so listen, switchy. Yeah, in the time we have left, first it of really all, really should have been Coco and the Puffs. I think there's a real I band, Coco and the Puffs. Uh, you have an oh, odd story good. for us tonight, but before yes. you do that, I realize that we do the plugs every uh, show, and we never ask you to plug your own show. So please go ahead and plug your own show. You have a show uh, on every two weeks, four nights. It's a podcast. Late. Yes, the yes. high strangeness factor on the on the uh, uh, the Paranormal UK Radio Network. Yes, yes, yes. When is it on? When can I get it? How can I? Get it? Uh, well, you you go to Spreaker. <laughs> sounds like uh, uh, sounds politically incorrect, but uh, you can uh, you can Google it. You'll be able to find it uh, mm-hmm. from the uh, <clears throat> the Paranormal UK Radio Network. They have a lot of shows, and okay. including they they uh, have this show available as well. Yes, yes. and mm-hmm. uh, uh, it's every fortnight. Every fortnight. Okay. And there's about two and a half years worth of shows if you go in the background. In fact, there's a show that's not uh, hasn't been on uh, out too long yes. with the Raven as the guest. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, how about that? Mm. Yeah, nice. It was okay. so much fun. Yeah, Fort- it was awesome. Was Fortnite's every two weeks for all of us in America. Okay, and one, for one. Westerners, right? Uh, wow! Did you sing on his show, uh, Raven? Did you give him a little song? No. Uh, okay. No, no, it, it, didn't uh, get no that this far. is Next this time. is a serious show, Mac. Okay, you, all right, I'm gonna have to. Don't, don't I'd sing. like to listen to that. So anyway, switching. So you have a tale from the fringe tonight, a very odd one, right? Yes, in, in fact, I was going through some uh, a stack of old UFO report magazines. I re- remember those from uh, predominantly the seventies, I think. Oh yeah, and uh, I remember this one particular story. I mean, it was so bizarre that I, I just kind of rejected it out of hand. But uh, and I didn't think I had it in my collection, but I, I stumbled on it, and then I found out the the reporter that did the the, the story was Anne Slate. Anne Slate was a contributor to a lot of these, and she's pro- maybe best known. She was the co-author of a famous Bigfoot book from the seventies called Bigfoot. It was a it was a paperback book. It was kind of, had kind of a green cover, and a lot of people know Good titles. Of this. Good title. Good title. It was just basic and, and to the point, but it covered all aspects of the Bigfoot phenomena at that time. Uh, Stan Gordon in his research and the bizarre uh, in, encounters in Pennsylvania in 73 and 74 are in there. Uh, Ron Moorhead, 
uh, the uh, the guy that captured the Sierra Sounds. That's that this is the first time his research was mentioned, and and one of the co-authors was uh, Alan Barry, who was the very reporter they went out with uh, Ron Moorhead uh, at, in the Sierra Nevadas. So uh, it was quite a classic book, and so Ambie Slate. Uh, Aunt B. Ann Slate, or just used her first initial there, uh, was uh, a, a contributor to a lot of this material. Now, this was called The Alien of Blount Island, and it's a, a really bizarre tale. And uh, it took place uh, uh, in, in Florida, uh, and, uh, and this is, uh, it, uh, it reported in, in the May 1979 issue of UFO Report. And a guy named Norman Chaston, uh, he had... Uh, arrived early to hear a lecture by Stanton Friedman because he'd be a year before he'd had this bizarre experience and he he didn't know much about the UFO phenomena or UFO reports so he he ends up uh, listening to Stanton Friedman and he sends Friedman a a letter about this crazy experience he had now he was a uh, a railroad electrical uh, engineer for the railroad for 35 years this was a friday evening january 1972 He's 60 years old. He uh, he takes his boat and trailer to Blount Island, and it uh, it's right uh, 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 near the Atlantic Ocean, uh, near the mouth of the St. John River, just east of Jacksonville. So, and this this Blount Island is actually an industrial area, but it's the weekend and things are pretty much shut down. So he's got uh, at least he's got this area to himself, and he's. Uh, He's looking for large red bass. He's quite an avid fisherman. So uh, he's anchored a little bit offshore, and uh, he's about three hours into fishing, and all of a sudden he sees these strange lights. And, of course, like most people do, he goes through the, you know, what the heck is this? Is it a low-flying helicopter or whatever? As this thing gets closer, it's kind of a, it's, it's a, a classic flying saucer. It's got a dome. It's about 75 feet long, eight feet uh, deep and about uh, a five foot dome he uh this thing is kind of right over him so he's freaking out obviously he turns the the lights off on his boat and immediately when he does that this thing turns off all its lights so that again he's getting a, a little more nervous so he uh He's 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 kind he's been uh, preoccupied with watching this thing. The tide is going out, and so his boat starts to get stuck, and it, be, it goes aground. So he gets out of the boat, makes his way through the muck, and he wants to find try and find something, a piece of wood or something to try and tr- book, uh, pry his boat loose. Well, he moves his spotlight around, and he encounters this really bizarre looking humanoid creature. And it's standing about it's it's uh, the uh, the growth is about waist high for this thing, which is about five, five and a half feet tall. It's pretty classic. It's got small arms, large head, pointed ears. Some of the grays reported don't really seem to have ears and an angular chin on top of this of the head is kind of a glowing disc. And of course, it has the the oversized, the uh, protruding eyes now. This thing now. There's, there's a couple aspects of this that that are in, you, you'll find some of the same patterns in other accounts. This thing uh, raises its arm, and there's something in its hand, some kind of a flat device, about three inches in diameter. A brilliant flash follows. Now, uh, this is very common in these reports. The entity has uh, a light on its chest, or it's holding a light, or whatever, and this guy uh, starts to become paralyzed. He can feel it starting at his neck and then it goes down through his body. He starts to become very dizzy and eventually uh, it goes to his legs and they give out. Now, right after this bright flash, he is experiencing this horrible stench. Now, not too often do you hear about the foul stench as far as I can recall with uh, human encounters, but certainly with Bigfoot, you know, and some of the other cryptids you do. So here's a couple of factors that perhaps well, it might suggest that this was a real experience. Uh, and this goes way back again to the 70s. Um, now, he's he's incapacitated. And uh, he's also, uh, as, as he starts to get his uh, faculties back a bit, he's also kind of afraid to move around too much. He doesn't want to be seen again if this thing is still around. 
And so finally he regains a use of his legs, but it's, it's, it's the next morning. This was about three in the morning when this, this uh, event uh, originally uh, occurred. So he, he find his boat. Now that the tide has come in, he swims out to his boat and he, he drives home. She, his wife can tell that there's something wrong with him, but uh, she has been under a doctor's care. She's been ill. He does not want to saddle her with this wild story. So he tells her, well, I know I just got seasick and it was it took me a while to you know recover and, and come home. Mm -hmm. So the next day he returns to the island. He wants to see if there's any clues, anything left there that uh, uh, that might uh, indicate what happened to him. Some you know landing marks, anything. There's nothing there. And he starts having these crazy dreams. He starts dreaming uh, of uh, visions of another planet. Uh, strange looking entities. He's dreaming of huge flowers, uh, assembly lines making saucer shaped craft. Mm. And it's really, really disturbing stuff. Now, the author at this point, uh, uh, Ann Slate, uh, speculates that these things might be very similar to the Kelly Hopkinsville goblins. And I, I don't really see the resemblance. I think she was off mm -hmm. base on that. And she does other speculation that this might have been some kind of a, a robot or something like that. And that, that doesn't seem to fit either. Three days later, and this is still early in February, he hears this huge thunderclap one night, and it's a terrible rainstorm. And after the rainstorm, he's, he's getting the same horrible stench that he got before on Blount Island. And he goes outside. He's kind of, because of the, the smell, he's got his shotgun with him. I don't know what he expects to encounter, but growing in the grass directly behind his camper that he, he brought back, it looks like a cluster of flesh-colored heads growing <laughs> in the ground. <laughs> These plants, he thought at least, resembled the faces of the humanoid. The face it seems of the like a scene right out of Motel Hell. Oh, yes, Absolutely is is uh and, and it even looks like they have these gaping mouths and large <laughs> eye sockets cool. so now three of these things uh three of the five uh it, it looks like the heads are more developed and two of them are more like uh, in quotes uh, like babies i mean the eyes are closed oh if they're God. really eyes <laughs> i know <laughs> this is this is why i remember i remember this from years ago and i thought oh man no no way no way <laughs> so uh, now he's looking around. He's wondering, well, I guess there's a spacecraft around. There's no spacecraft. He uh, he, he call you know. There's no. He wants to grab a couple of neighbors to show him he, that he's not crazy, you know. But they're they've gone to work. So he drags his poor wife out, and she freaks out looking at these things. So what he does, he say he's got to. He, he wants to uh, prove it to somebody. So he digs up one of these things, oh. one of these. Heads, takes it to the Jacksonville Journal newspaper offices. <laughs> and, uh, so he's, he's got this head sitting on the floor of the car. This is this is a fringe report where you go, go to the edge, you know, where the, the, the fringe ends and then yes. it, it drops off like the edge of the world. If it was flat. That's yeah. where we are right now. We're, we're, off, we're yeah. off the edge of the world right okay. now. Now, also, he's getting it's, it smells horrible. He's starting to get a little bit dizzy. He's concerned because he's driving. You have to be very careful when you harvest your heads. You now he's getting very dizzy. careful. OK, now, this, go was ahead. Something, this was new to him. So he wasn't you know, he wasn't as careful as he probably should have been. So he gets to the newspaper offices and he's trying to he's trying to describe what he's got in the car. And they're asking, say, are you drunk? He's like, no, no, I don't drink. So he gets he gets a few of the people out there to look at this and uh they, 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 one of them says, look, it's even got little teeth <laughs> in, oh. in it. And uh, so they, uh, they're, they're done with that. I mean, the, the smell is horrible. So then he goes to the, the Seaboard Coastline Railroad Company, Roundhouse. It doesn't say why. He must have known some people there, but the article doesn't mention it. And he, uh, he, he, he brings it in. And they don't, you know, it, it smells horrible. So they tell him to get the hell out of there. A guy named Clyde uh, Schramm, who was a pipe fitter, right. sees the, now there's, it's leaking this like red stuff. And oh. it was in the, in the car as well because he had to slam on the brakes one time. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> and, and the next day, the, the heads that were left were all shriveled up to pink sponge like balls. The next day, and, yes. Here, 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 Must okay. straight up vom. No. Yeah. Raven is vomiting. C.C. <laughs> Krieger of the Mushroom Handbook, uh, there, there is a variety of fungi 
called stink horns. <laughs> and they, they smell like horrible, like Limburger cheese. And because of the way insects attack them and so forth, uh, the the uh, these things kind of take on uh, human features, shapes, and designs. Well, it, it, this is you know if if this is really true, <laughs> it's it's kind of hard to believe that these all these people were seeing these faces in this thing. On the other hand, how do, you know what, what happened? Did he get some seeds from the uh, inadvertently from this area, and they yes. grow and in, in the marsh they grow themselves? I mean, I've seen cartoons where they grow Martians and stuff like that, but that mm. doesn't doesn't really fit. No. So, but it but also it has uh, it's some varieties. They have uh, some kind of a, like a, a red uh, substance that oozes out of them. So, you know, one can decide what what really happened here. Uh, uh, I never I, when I when I first read this uh, many, many years ago, I thought, oh, no way. And then I saw, well, Ann Slate did the research. OK, maybe. And then, then I'm looking at this now and there's a few aspects of it that are uh, <laughs> that, that have other patterns. And then, oh, no, oh, no. If, I wish I could describe the image that Commander Cobra yes. has behind him. It's both appropriate to the story and, and inappropriate. Very inappropriate. Yeah. <clears throat> It looks yeah. like a uh, hey stinkhorn is stinkhorn. If you want a picture and I got the real wide web, I'm showing you. I'm bringing it to the masses, man. But they want to know that is a stinkhorn, and Jeff Bezos used it as the as the pattern to build his spaceship. That's okay, what he well, used. That, okay, yeah. all right. It looks like several different things, but that will help we'll people understand from. the inappropriateness of the image. Uh, it uh, looks like an adult uh, toy. Device. But you wonder, oh, well, you, did this guy really have gutter. some kind of an encounter? I mean, the encounter is similar to some of the other encounters. But uh, anyway, I thought that was one of the weirdest freaking stories yeah, that I've is ever weird. read in the pages of UFO Report or anywhere else. So basically, the, the guy was driving around in his car with the head of what he thought with, was with, an alien. What he thought, yes. <laughs> and it smelled. And he's trying to trying to prove to people that it's he's really it, this is really something. And uh, but anyway, wow. uh, I guess. Uh, and they, they even took it away, uh, some of this to, to be uh, analyzed. And really? we never got the end result of that. But mm -hmm. hopefully it was just these horrible looking mushrooms and that the we don't have triffids or aliens growing in our backyards. Right. Maybe he took a bite of one of the mushrooms. and. That's what you know, I was going to say. This sounds a little uh, psychedelic. To yeah, me. Some of the <laughs> well, I'm, I've never been partial to mushrooms, and now I'm really not partial to mushrooms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you're going to really love what I'm putting up on the screen next, because this is the other version of it. Get was, ready, folks. The Wisconsin version. Okay. Here we go. Well, the tea. All right. Still We're ready to go, but... Okay. Radio. So have... Oh, my oh, God. Oh, stop <laughs> it. Oh, that's it's awful. It's like a Look Georgie O'Keefe painting. Yeah, really. <laughs> it looks like octopuses, you know, being developed or something coming out of I, eggs. I'm going oh, to apologize awful. to the listening audience that I ever brought up this fringe report. Really? We apologize. <laughs> <Yeah>. That's disgusting. <laughs> Don't apologize. That was some crazy. I just love that the first reaction was. I need to show this to someone. Yeah, right. Let me Quick. let me take it. So sample. they know I'm not nuts. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, I love the. Wow. Uh, that, I just love that. That I don't first know if you thought. can see this. The illustration. Okay. Oh come on, man! Okay. This um, is the illustration. Oh wait, what the boy? Get, yes. the, the, the guy oh. is uh, really uh, smelled. Oh wait a minute here! I, I, I can. I hate can that. Okay, all right. Of course, the radio the listening, show listening audience. Right. can't see this. Right, but, but we'll describe but, it. We'll describe oh, it with our words. Yeah, wait right here. Okay, here we yeah. go. Right, there we go. Now we see the real switch. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. Okay, so this is a guy in slacks. Yeah, he looks pretty slacks. handsome, maybe like maybe 5'11", maybe 6 feet. Okay. And he looks like he has a cigarette. And no, no, he has curly uh, hair and a it, scarf. It's a rag. It's a rag. Yeah, he's holding because it smells so much. Holding a and, rag. Okay. And, and you see these. These, these are, then, are representing the the, the the smell here. That's yeah, that all right. That, bad that's smell. See that there's there's like the from the cartoon the 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 lines that like they smell and I see like little mushrooms that look heads. like heads. Yeah. And there's huh. there's a UFO. There's an UFO behind him. Yep. So yeah, so wow. that's bad news. Okay. They look like yeah, very strange. They should do well. A, well, quickly scouring the uh, the many images of the uh, of this 
This not another one. one. Yes, this oh. is the one that looks closest to a. a could be a head. Oh, I see back hate there. that oh, God, that so is awful. much. All right. Okay. Wow. Uh, one. Well, let's, let's, let's assume this guy had a real experience out there. It, it wouldn't be a stretch <laughs> to, for him to look at these things. Yeah, it looked like a head. Think that there's something yeah. else. Looks like the little spinal column there and everything's disgusting. Yeah. But if it, you think you find an alien head, do not transport them in your car and do not right. take it to the newspaper office. Don't bring it to the newspaper office. No. no. Everyone write that down. Okay. Everyone write that down. Just don't take a sample. Just, you know. Your Tell your friends. Was, was the guy the getting a blood test? Did he yeah, have a right blood test us. or right. something? Write to us. Get your friends. Have a have a drink or eleven, mm. and be like, "This is what happened," right. and then they'll understand. Juan, how are we doing on the time there, my friend? Uh, you right. almost said that like you want to eject back, like you want to get uh, away from this. I don't want to, no one, I'm going to eject. Actually, Go ahead, we, please. One, we need to wrap it up and do the plugs. Okay, great. Uh, well. Okay, why don't we do that? First of all, the new plug is to listen to Switchy's show every two weeks on the Paranormal UK Network. Is that it? Yes. Okay, when are you going to invite me on? you got Raven no. on. Well, you, wait, sure you, you've been on. on. Oh, you really? On a couple of years ago, yeah. Okay. Let's right. have a lot of fun. And, um, and, and Commander Cobra and I were on with the, uh, the flagship uh, uh, the Paranormal UK Radio Network flagship radio show of the same name. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. in the last year. A lot of people over in uh, England listen to us with, and you. With with Irene Allen Block. Oh, yeah. She's she's a trip. Irene uh, is a trip. So, uh, okay, everyone listen in. Google it. And uh, also, we want to um, talk about Homestrad Troops, H-F-O-T. Uh, Google them as well. Uh, they are a military charity that builds homes for uh, our veterans who were wounded in Iraq and in Afghanistan who may have lost limbs. They make um, the living situation better for them, uh, better, to, easier to get around in the house and lower countertops, things like that. And once they build the house, they just give them the keys, no mortgage. It's for free. They deserve it. Homes for our troops. Homes for our troops. Just Google them. 88 cents on the uh, dollar. Your dollar goes to the charity, which is really big um, uh, when it comes to the charity biz. 88 cents on the dollar. Homes for our troops. Uh, please Google them. And we're going to get them on the show again real soon. Uh, also, um, Raj Shab, our good friend and his mad Englishman friends, are putting together, uh, putting back together the Mosquito Warplane from World War II, built of wood, two Rolls Royce engines on it, went so fast, as one he likes to say, they didn't put machine guns on it because... The Mosquito outruns the bullets. It went faster than the bullets. Yep. The People's Mosquito Project. Please Google them, too. Very interesting. And I think that is it. I want to thank everyone for listening to us out in the network, uh, the internet networks, also Armed Forces Radio. And thank you for downloading us, the podcast. And um, I think that's it. Is that it, everyone? Yeah. Awesome show. Had a lot of fun. Well, let me just uh, thank everyone. Not in order. Um, Switchy, thank you. His mic is muted, but yeah, it's we'll customary wait. at this point. Switch that you would say, uh, "Thank you, Mac." Thank you, Mac. <laughs> uh, thank you, Mac. You My go. pleasure. Mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> thank you. And um, now that you showed those donuts, all I want is a donut. The donut at the beginning of the show. But uh, anyway, I have to scratch that itch. Uh, also, thank you, uh, Coco, for joining us. As always, Mac, a privilege. A privilege. A privilege to privilege. be on okay. the wing, and I'm looking for the signal for the kiss off. Okay, <laughs> just uh, <laughs> tell Teddy we said hey. And uh, also, uh, Raven, the time has come for us to say goodbye to you. Double bun night. The double bun night. Double bun. Yep. Say bye to the double buns. Bye to the double buns. Bye, oh, Raven. I can't, so I can't wait to like, the freak show if I see a guy wearing that uh, that style now. I will <laughs> freak out. That'd be really bad. Um, hopefully, um, your shoes uh, will find themselves together again in Perverted ghosts on picking them up and throwing them around your house. Let's hope. Okay. Thank you so much for having me. If anything happens, let us know. Okay. I will. Yeah. JJ, thank you as always. You're welcome. Enjoyed it. Okay. And um, uh, until you hear us the next time, this is Mac from the entire gang saying be safe, be happy, and bye bye. <laughs>